Playing with Power MTG. Powerful cards, powerful formats. Before we get into tonight's game, I wanted to ask a question. Do you have extra cards lying around that you don't use? Want to buy or trade for some extra cards but don't know how to maximize the value? Then you should try out today's sponsor, Card Conduit. Card Conduit is the best service when it comes to selling your extra cards. They have three main services. Their standard service lets you send them your unsorted cards of any value. They will sort, grade, and give you the best price for your cards. Their curated service is similar. Send them your unsorted cards worth over a dollar in value. They will charge half the fee of the standard service and charge no fee per card. Their sorted service is a great value as well. Choose cards in advance with their selection tool, send them sorted to Card Conduit, and they will grade and buy list them automatically. Save yourself the time of having to send to multiple sites and let Card Conduit do it instead. Their fee is only 2% with no fee per card. So give Card Conduit a try today. If you sign up with my link in the description below or use the promo code POWER, you will also get 10% off of their fees when you use their service. A big thanks to Card Conduit for sponsoring today's video. Welcome to the definitive CEDH compilation of Krark the Thumbless and Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. This is a storm deck that uses various engines to help you win the game. Having multiple Krark triggers lets you add tons of value to all of your spells. This deck can win with either storm damage, dual caster mage, or underworld breach. Mike wins the beta booster flip it or rip it challenge and gets to start us off. Mike draws a card for turn and plays a Verdant Catacombs. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a savanna onto the battlefield. He casts Birds of Paradise. Mike passes. Matt draws a card for turn and plays a Mana Confluence. He taps it to help cast a turn one, Mystic Remora. Matt passes. Tad draws and plays a Command Tower. He casts Land War Elves. He ships the turn to Tad. Tad draws and plays a Marsh Flats. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an Overgrown Tomb into play untapped, paying two life. He casts Ignoble Hierarch. He passes. Mike draws and casts Elves of Deep Shadow. He follows it up with an Esper Sentinel. All finished up, he gives the turn to Matt. During his upkeep, Matt taps his Mana Confluence to help pay for Mystic Remora. He draws and casts a Lotus Petal. Sentinel triggers and Mike draws. Upset that nobody fed his fish, Matt casts in the festivities. It resolves and deals one damage to each opponent and wipes five creatures off of the board. Now, having taught everyone a lesson, Matt passes. Dan draws and plays a Savannah. He casts Finehorn Elves. He passes. Tad draws and plays a City of Brass. He casts Tenderwall. Matt wonders just how many creatures his opponents will cast and Tad gives a turn to Mike. Mike draws and plays a Breeding Pool into play untapped, paying two life. He exiles Simeon Spirit Guide from his hand to help cast Rhystic Study. Remora triggers and Matt draws. Rhystic Study resolves and Mike ships the turn. During its upkeep, Matt lets his Mystic Remora die. He draws and taps his Mana Confluence to help cast Springleaf Drum. Rhystic triggers and Mike draws. All finished up, Matt passes. Dan draws and plays a Rejuvenating Springs. He casts Survival of the Fittest, paying for Rhystic. He passes. Tad draws and plays a Bayou. He sacrifices his Tinder Wall, adding two red. He casts Dockside Extortionist. Rhystic triggers and Mike draw. Dockside enters and he creates three treasures. Tad ships the turn. Mike draws, looks at his hand with nothing to do, and passes. Matt draws and plays an island. He taps Mana Confluence to help cast Krark the Thumbless. Rhystic triggers and Mike draws. Matt passes. At the end of Matt's turn, Tad casts Nature's Claim, targeting Survival, paying for Rhystic. In response, Dan activates Survival of the Fittest, discarding Spellseeker. He fetches up a Dranith Magistrate into his hand. Survival is destroyed and Dan gains four life. The turn moves to Dan. Dan draws and slams down Dranith Magistrate, paying for Rhystic. He plays an Overgrown Tomb, tapped, and passes the turn. Tad draws and casts a Finehorn Elves, paying for Rhystic. Tad passes. At the end of Tad's turn, Mike casts Worldly Tutor. He fetches up a Dockside Extortionist onto the top of his library. The turn moves to Mike. Mike draws and plays a Wooded Foothills. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Badlands onto the battlefield. He casts a Dockside Extortionist. It resolves and Tad chooses the Path of Chaos and doesn't crack his treasures. Dockside then creates four treasures. Mike follows it up with a Wish Claw Talisman. He passes. Matt draws and taps his Mana Confluence to help cast his own Dockside Extortionist. Rhystic triggers and Mike draws. Dockside resolves and with the trigger on the stack, Tad makes a deal with Mike. He will crack his treasures if Mike will crack his own. Mike accepts and each of them sacrifice their treasures and float mana. Matt, feeling like he got the short end of the stick on that deal, creates two treasures. Matt attempts to move through phases and in response, Mike uses his floating mana to help cast Fire Covenant, paying 11 life, targeting all of his opponent's creatures. In response, Tad uses his floating mana to help cast Abrupt Decay, targeting Wish Claw Talisman. Abrupt Decay resolves and Wish Claw is destroyed. With Fire Covenant back on the stack, Matt casts Frantic Search. Rhystic triggers and Mike draws. Quirk triggers and Matt loses the flip, returning Frantic Search to his hand. Then Fire Covenant resolves, wiping most of the board. With the board reset, once again, Matt passes. Dan draws and plays a Tropical Island. 
He casts his commander, Timna the Weaver, paying for Ristic. Dan ships the turn to Tad. Tad draws and taps his City of Brass to help cast Grim Monolith, paying for Ristic. All finished up, Tad passes. Mike draws and plays a Taiga. He casts his commander, Najila the Blade Blossom. He gives the turn to Matt. Matt draws and taps his Mana Confluence to help cast Baral, Chief of Compliance. Ristic triggers and Mike draws. Matt passes. Dan draws and immediately moves to combat. He attacks Tad with Temna. Tad takes it and Dan gains two life. In his second main phase, Dan pays one and draws one through Timna. He plays a Scalding Tarn for turn. He casts his other commander, Thrasios, Triton Hero, paying for Ristic. Dan ships the turn to Tad. Tad draws and then taps his City of Brass to help cast his commander, Corvold, Fake Cursed King. Ristic triggers and Tad pays. Corvold enters and triggers. Tad sacrifices his Grim Monolith. Corvold triggers again, Tad draws, and then Corvold gets a plus one plus one counter. With nothing else, Tad passes. Mike draws and casts Professional Facebreaker. He attempts to move to combat and, in response, Matt casts Stern Dismissal, targeting Najila. Ristic triggers and Mike draws. In response, Mike casts Dispel, targeting Stern Dismissal. Dismissal is countered and Mike moves to combat. He attacks Dan with Najila and Dockside. Najila triggers and Mike creates a 1-1 warrior, tapped and attacking Matt. Dan blocks Dockside with Thrasios and everybody takes the rest. Professional Facebreaker triggers twice and Mike creates two treasures. With nothing else, Mike ends his turn. Matt draws and taps the City of Brass to help cast Bergy, God of Storytelling. Ristic triggers and Mike draws. Matt passes. At the end of Matt's turn, Dan cracks his Scalding Tarn, pays a life, and fetches up a Watery Grave into play tapped. Dan draws and plays a Gemstone Caverns. He takes no other actions and gives the turn to Tad. Tad draws and decides it's time to act. He casts Unearth, targeting his Dockside Extortionist, paying for Ristic. The table knows this is bad news, and so Dan decides to dig. He activates Thrasios, Scrying One, and reveals an Animate Dead into his hand. Still in response, Mike cracks his treasures, floating mana. Unearth resolves and Dockside enters, creating two treasures. Tad moves to combat and attacks Mike with Corvold. Corvold triggers and Tad sacrifices his overgrown tomb, drawing a card and putting a counter on Corvold. Mike takes it and in his second main phase, Tad taps his City of Brass to help cast Imperial Seal. Ristic triggers and Mike draws. Tad fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. He cracks a treasure and Corvold triggers. He draws and Corvold gets a counter. He casts Culling the Weak, sacrificing Dockside as an additional cost. Corvold and Ristic trigger. Mike draws off of Ristic, and with the Corvold trigger still in the stack, Matt casts Force of Will, paying a life and exiling a blue card, targeting Culling the Weak. Bergy and Ristic trigger. Mike draws, and Matt adds a red. Culling the Weak is countered, and Baral triggers. Matt draws and discards a card. With the stack cleared up, Tad casts Lion's Eye Diamond. Tad cracks a treasure to pay for Ristic. Corvold triggers, he draws, and Corvold gets a counter. He plays a Verdant Catacombs. He cracks it, paying a life, and Corvold triggers again. He draws, and Corvold gets another counter. He fetches up a Taiga onto the battlefield. He casts Elves of Deep Shadow. Ristic triggers, and Mike draws. Foiled in his attempt to win, Tad passes. At the end of Tad's turn, Dan casts Cyclonic Rift, paying for Ristic, targeting Najila. In response, Mike casts Fierce Guardianship for its alternate cost, countering Cyclonic Rift. The turn moves to Mike. Mike draws and plays a Spire Garden. He wastes no time in casting Derevi, Imperial Tactician. Knowing this is game over, Dan casts Pact of Negation, targeting Derevi. Ristic triggers, and Mike draws. In response, Mike casts Veil of Summer. It resolves, and Mike draws. Pact resolves, but doesn't counter Derevi. Then Derevi resolves. It enters and taps down Bergy. Mike attempts to move to combat, and the table sees their end. Mike attacks Matt with everything. Najila triggers three times, creating three warriors tapped and attacking Matt. Matt takes it all, and Derevi and Facebreaker trigger. Mike creates a treasure and untaps four lands with Derevi. He uses the rest of his Derevi triggers to tap down the rest of his opponent's creatures. Still in combat, he activates Najila. He untaps all attacking creatures and then gain Trample, Lifelink, and Haste until the end of turn. He gains another combat. He presents a loop of attacking with his creatures, creating more and more warriors through Najila, untapping his lands with Derevi, gaining treasures through Facebreaker, and activating Najila again and again for infinite combat steps. He attacks his opponents until they are dead, and Mike wins the game. And Cole gets to start us off. Cole draws and plays a Swamp. He casts Tormented Soul. He follows it up with an Ornithopter. He passes. Jay draws and plays a Gemstone Mine. He casts Carpet of Flowers. He passes. Noah draws and plays a Training Center. He casts a Turn 1, Mystic Remora. Noah gives the turn to Ian. Ian draws and plays a Brushland. He taps it to help cast Esper Sentinel. He passes. Cole draws and plays an Island. He immediately moves to combat and attacks Ian with Ornithopter. Ian declares no blocks and, in response, Cole ninjutsus in his commander, Yuriko the Tiger Shadow, bouncing Ornithopter to his hand. Ian takes it and Yuriko triggers. Cole reveals a Bolus's Citadel and each opponent loses six. In his second main phase, he recasts Ornithopter. He passes. Jay draws and in his first main phase, he adds one green through his carpet of flowers. He plays a Volcanic Island. 
He casts his commander, Animar, Soul of Elements. Jay ships the turn to Noah. During his upkeep, Noah lets his Mermora die. He draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast Rhystic Study. Esper triggers and Ian draws. Rhystic resolves and, having upgraded from a Mystic Remora, Noah passes. Ian draws and plays a Bountiful Promenade. He casts Thorn of Amethyst. Rhystic triggers and Noah draws. Noah groans and Thorn resolves. With nothing else, Ian passes. Cole draws and plays an Island. He casts Thassa, God of the Sea. Rhystic triggers and Noah draws. He moves to combat and attacks Noah with Yuriko and Tormented Soul. Noah takes it and Yuriko triggers. Cole reveals a Dakuchi Silencer and each opponent loses two. Cole gives the turn to Jay. Jay draws and in his first main phase he adds two green through his carpet. He plays a Windswept Teeth. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a tropical island onto the battlefield. He casts Painter's Servant, Animar, and Rhystic Trigger. Noah draws and Animar gets a plus one plus one counter. Painter's Servant resolves and Jay names Black, giving Animar protection from essentially everything. Next, he casts Mystic Remora, Esper and Rhystic Trigger, and both players draw. Satisfied with his turn, Jay passes. Noah draws and plays a command tower. He casts Dockside Extortionist. It enters and Noah creates seven treasures. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast his commander, Krark the Thumbless. He follows it up with his other commander, Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. It enters as a copy of Krark. He casts Phantasmal Image. It enters as a copy of Dockside Extortionist and then Noah creates seven more treasures. He casts Imperial Recruiter. It enters and Noah fetches up a Harmonic Prodigy into his hand. He casts Frantic Search. Krark, Sakashima, Esper Sentinel, and Mr. Kimura all trigger. Ian and Jay draw, and then Noah flips two coins. Noah loses both flips, and unfortunately, really needed at least one of those flips to go off. Sadly, he returns the spell to his hand and passes. Ian draws and plays an Exotic Orchard. He takes no other actions and passes, discarding to hand size, including a Savine's Reclamation. During his upkeep, Thassa, God of the Sea, triggers and Cole scries one. He draws and plays an Underground River. He activates Thassa, making Yuriko unblockable until the end of turn. He moves to combat and attacks Noah with Yuriko and Tormented Soul. Noah declares no blocks and, in response, Cole ninjutsus in Dakuchi Silencer, bouncing Tormented Soul to his hand. Noah takes it, Yuriko triggers twice, and Dakuchi Silencer triggers once. He discards Tormented Soul to Dakuchi, destroying Noah's Dockside. Then Yuriko's triggers resolve, and Cole reveals a Slither Blade with each opponent losing two, and then he reveals a Temporal Manipulation with each opponent losing five. All finished up, Cole passes. During his upkeep, Jay lets his Remora die. He draws, and in his first main phase, he adds two green through his carpet. He plays a Scalding Tarn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Taiga onto the battlefield. He casts Arbor Elf, Animar and Rhystic Trigger. Noah draws, and Animar gets a counter. He casts Sylvan Library, Esper and Rhystic Trigger. He pays for Rhystic, and Ian draws off of Esper. Jay passes. At the end of Jay's turn, Ian casts Abrupt Decay, targeting Krark. Rhystic Triggers, and Noah draws. Abrupt Decay resolves, and Krark is destroyed. Then the turn moves to Noah. Noah draws and plays a Shivan Reef. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast Harmonic Prodigy. He casts Frantic Search. His copy of Krark triggers twice through Harmonic Prodigy and Ian draws off of Esper. Noah flips one heads and one tails. He copies Frantic Search, drawing two, discarding two, and untapping three lands. Then Frantic Search is bounced to his hand. He taps his Ancient Tomb and pays two life to help cast Phyrexian Metamorph. It enters as a copy of Dockside Extortionist, creating seven treasures. He casts Solve the Equation. Krark triggers twice. He wins both flips, copying the spell twice. He fetches up a Brightstone Ritual, fetches up a Jessica's Will, and then finally fetches up a Heat Shimmer into his hand. He casts Brightstone Ritual. Krark triggers twice, and in response to both, Jay removes the final counter from Gemstone Mine and pays two life to help cast Mental Misstep, targeting Brightstone Ritual. Both Esper and Rhystic trigger, and both players draw. Then, the original Brightstone is countered. Noah flips twice, winning one and losing one. He adds three red. The original spell would be bounced to hand, but it got countered. He casts Jessica's Will, targeting Ian. Krark triggers twice, and Noah wins both flips. He copies Jessica's Will two times. He adds a total of 27 red, and then exiles Tavern Scoundrel, Arcane Signet, Tybalt's Trickery, Soul Ring, Mind's Dilation, and Four Lands. He recasts his commander, Krark the Thumbless. He casts Tavern Scoundrel from Exile. He casts Heat Shimmer, targeting Imperial Recruiter. Krark and Sakashima trigger a total of four times. Noah wins two flips and loses two flips. He creates two copies of Heat Shimmer and bounces the original to his hand. He targets and copies Imperial Recruiter both times. He fetches up a Spellseeker into his hand and then fetches up a Stormkiln Artist into his hand. Tavern Scoundrel triggers twice and creates four treasures. Noah casts Spellseeker. It enters and triggers twice through Harmonic Prodigy. He fetches up a Grape Shot and then fetches up a Pact of Negation all into his hand. He presents a loop of casting Grape Shot with all copies targeting his opponents. Stormkiln Artist triggers each time, creating a treasure for every Storm copy. 
Clark and Sakashima trigger four times per cast, and yes, he really did roll for these on camera. Every time he loses, Grape Shot bounces back to his hand and he recasts this. He does this repeatedly, netting mana, dealing damage to his opponents, and increasing the storm count until his opponents are dead, and Noah wins the game. And Matt gets to start us off. But Tad has a pregame action and puts Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling Overgrown Tomb. Matt draws and plays a Misty Rainforest. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He casts Mana Crypt. He casts Bergy, God of Storytelling. He follows it up with a Jeweled Lotus. Bergy triggers and he adds a red. He cracks his Jeweled Lotus to cast his commander, Krark the Thumbless. Bergy triggers and he adds a red again. Krark resolves and already sitting in a strong position, Matt passes the turn. Dan draws and plays a Wooded Foothills. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Tropical Island onto the battlefield. He casts Mystic Remora. In response, Matt reveals his Don't Feed the Fish tattoo, points to it and says, Do not make me tap the sign. The table laughs and Mystic Remora resolves. Dan follows it up with an Esper Sentinel. He passes. Tad draws and plays a Marsh Flats. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Badlands onto the battlefield. He casts Deathrite Shaman. Tad ends the turn. Mike draws and plays a Plateau. He casts Esper Sentinel. He passes. During his upkeep, Matt loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays an Island. He casts his other commander, Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. Bergy triggers and adds a red. Sakashima resolves and enters as a copy of Krark. He moves to combat and attacks Dan with Krark and Bergy. Dan takes it, and all finished up, Matt ships the turn to Dan. During his upkeep, Dan pays to keep his Remora. He draws, takes no other actions, and passes the turn. During his upkeep, Tad activates his Deathrite Shaman, exiling a land from Matt's graveyard to help cast Vampiric Tutor. Both Espers and Mystic Remora trigger. Tad doesn't pay, and everyone draws. Tad then fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. Tad draws and plays a Polluted Delta. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Bayou onto the battlefield. He casts a Dockside Extortionist. It enters, and Tad creates four treasures. He cracks three treasures to help cast Eldritch Evolution, sacrificing Dockside as an additional cost. Remora triggers, and Dan draws. Eldritch resolves, and Tad fetches up an Eternal Witness onto the battlefield. It triggers and returns Dockside from his graveyard to his hand. All finished up, Tad passes. Mike draws and plays a Volcanic Island. He casts Rite of Flame. Remora and Esper trigger, and Dan draws two. Mike adds two red. He uses it to help cast his own Dockside Extortionist. It enters, and he creates four treasures. He cracks some of his treasures to help cast his commander, Najila the Blade Blossom. He cracks a treasure to help cast Ignoble Hierarch. He moves to combat and attacks Dan with Esper. Noble Hierarch's Exalted triggers, and Esper Sentinel gets plus one plus one. Dan takes it, and Mike ends the turn. During his upkeep, Matt wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Fiery Islet. He casts Spellseeker. Bergy triggers and adds a red. Spellseeker resolves, and he fetches up a Jataxian Probe into his hand. He pays two life to help cast Jataxian Probe. A lot of triggers happen. Krark, Sakashima, Bergy, Remora, and both Esper Sentinels trigger. Matt pays for both Esper Sentinels, Dan draws off of Remora, he adds a red through Bergy, then with both Krark triggers on the stack, Dan casts Flusterstorm, with all copies targeting the original Jataxian Probe. Mike Sentinel triggers, and he draws. The original Probe is countered, and Matt finally flips for his Krark triggers. Matt wins one Krark flip, looking at Dan's hand and drawing a card. He loses the other Krark flip, but doesn't return Jataxian Probe because it's already been countered. He casts a Lotus Petal. Remora triggers, and Dan draws. Bergy triggers, and he adds a red. He taps his Fiery Islet to help cast Impulse. Krark, Sakashima, Bergy, and Remora trigger. Dan draws off of Remora, he adds a red through Bergy, he then wins one Krark flip and loses one Krark flip. He copies Impulse, looking at the top four, putting one into his hand and bottoming the rest. He then returns the original to his hand. He casts Mox Diamond. Remora triggers, and Dan draws. Bergy triggers, and he adds a red. It enters, and Matt discards a land. He recasts Impulse. Krark, Sakashima, Bergy, and Remora all trigger. Dan draws off of Remora, Matt adds a red through Bergy, and then he loses both flips, returning Impulse to his hand. He cracks his Lotus Petal to help cast Impulse for the third time. Krark, Sakashima, Bergy, and Remora all trigger again. With all the triggers on the stack, Tad casts in Tomb. Both Espers and Remora trigger, and Tad doesn't pay for any of them. Tad then fetches up an Underworld Breach into his graveyard. Then Matt doesn't pay for Dan's Remora, and he draws. Bergy triggers, and Matt adds a red. Krark and Sakashima's triggers resolve, and Matt loses both flips again. The table cheers, Matt cries, and Impulse returns to hand. He casts Lightning Bolt, targeting Najila. Krark, Sakashima, Bergy, and Remora trigger again. Dan draws, and then Matt adds a red through Bergy. Krark and Sakashima's trigger resolve, and he loses them again. Matt curses the luck gods and our lord and savior Ken, and he casts Lightning Bolt again, targeting Dan this time. Krark, Sakashima, Bergy, and Remora all trigger again. Dan draws, and Matt adds a red through Bergy. 
Then the Krakashima triggers Resolve and loses one flip and then finally wins one flip. Dan takes three from Lightning Bolt and the original is bounced with Matt's hand. He moves to combat and attacks Dan with Quark, Sakashima, and Bergy. Dan takes it and in his second main phase, Matt casts Lightning Bolt again targeting Dan. You might be asking, with what mana? Don't forget, Bergy says this mana persists through phases. Both Quarks, Bergy, and Remora trigger. Dan draws off of Remora and then Matt adds a red through Bergy. Matt wins one Quark flip and loses the other. Dan takes three from Lightning Bolt and the original is returned to his hand. He casts Lightning Bolt for what feels like the 600th time. Both Quarks, Bergy, and Remora trigger. Dan draws off of Remora and Matt adds a red through Bergy. Matt wins one Quark flip and loses the other. Dan takes three from Lightning Bolt and then the original is returned to Matt's hand. He repeats this process exactly three more times. Dan draws each time and then on the last flip, Matt wins both flips. In total, Dan takes nine damage from Lightning Bolt and draws three cards. With Lightning Bolt finally being in the graveyard and then after sucking up all the turn equity in the universe, Matt passes the turn. During his upkeep, Dan lets his Remora die. Also during his upkeep, he casts Vampiric Tutor. Esper triggers and Mike draws. Dan fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. He draws and plays a Morphic Pool. He casts Mox Diamond, discarding City of Brass. He casts Lion's Eye Diamond. He casts Entomb, fetching up an Ariok Salvagers and putting it into his graveyard. He casts Reanimate, returning Ariok Salvagers to the battlefield, losing four life. He cracks his LED, discards his hand, and adds three white. He uses this mana to activate Ariok Salvagers, returning LED to his hand. He presents a loop of activating Ariok Salvagers, returning LED to his hand, casting it, and then cracking it for three white. With each iteration, he nets one white. He then uses this mana now to cast, crack, and return LED, netting all other colors as well. He casts his commander, Thrasios, Triton Hero. He uses some of his infinite mana to activate Thrasios to draw his library and put all lands onto the battlefield tapped. He casts Thassa's Oracle. It enters, triggers, and Dan wins the game. And Steven gets to start us off. Steven draws and plays a Verdant Catacombs. He casts that Mana Crypt. He casts a Jeweled Lotus. He cracks his Lotus to cast his commander, Tevish Zot, Doom of Fools. He casts his other commander, Rograk, Son of Rogar. He activates Tevish's second ability, sacrificing Rograk, drawing three cards. With an amazing turn one in the books, Steven passes, actually discarding to hand size. Zack draws and plays an Exotic Orchard. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Talisman of Dominance. He casts a Lotus Petal. He cracks his Petal to help cast a Talisman of Progress. Feeling good, Zack passes. Dante draws and plays an Urza Saga, getting its first counter. He passes. Noah draws and plays a Snow-Covered Mountain. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts his commander, Krark the Thumbless. Noah ships the turn. At the end of Noah's turn, Steven cracks his Verdant Catacombs, pays a life, and fetches up a Badlands onto the battlefield. During his upkeep, Steven loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays a Mana Confluence. He casts a Wish Claw Talisman. He activates Tevish's first ability, creating two Thralls. Steven ends his turn. During his upkeep, Zack loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and taps his Talisman to help cast Brainstorm. He draws three and puts two back on top. He plays a Volcanic Island for turn. He casts his commander, Krom, Ludovic's Opus. He moves to combat and attacks Tevish. Tevish takes it and Zack passes it to Dante. During Dante's upkeep, Dante doesn't lose his Mana Crypt roll because he's the only one who doesn't have a Mana Crypt. Who's laughing now? He draws and in his first main phase, Urza Saga gets another counter. He plays a Tropical Island and ends his turn. During his upkeep, Noah loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and casts Gamble. Quark triggers, Noah loses the flip, and Gamble returns to his hand. He plays a Snow-Covered Mountain. He recasts Gamble. Krom triggers and Zack draws. Quark triggers, Noah loses the flip, and Gamble returns to his hand again. He moves to combat and attacks Tavish with Quark. Steven blocks with a throw, and Noah passes the turn. During his upkeep, Steven loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays a Swamp. He activates Tevish's second ability, sacrificing a Thrall and drawing two cards. He recasts his commander, Rograk. He casts Duress, targeting Zack. Krom triggers and Zack draws. Zack reveals his hand and he discards Miscast. All through, Steven passes. During his upkeep, Zack loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and moves to combat. He attacks Tevish with Krom. Tevish dies and in his second main phase, Zack taps his Talisman to cast Demonic Tutor. He fetches up a card into his hand. He taps his other talisman to cast Ranger Captain of Eos. It enters and Zack fetches up a Dragon's Rage Channeler into his hand. He casts Dragon's Rage Channeler and passes the turn. Dante draws and in his first main phase, Urza Saga triggers. He floats mana and sacrifices it, fetching up a Jeweled Lotus onto the battlefield. He plays a Yavamaya, Cradle of Growth for turn. He casts Kinnon, Bonder Prodigy. He casts a Mox Amber. Krom triggers and Zack draws. 
Dante cracks his lotus to cast his commander, Kodama of the East Tree. Dante passes. During his upkeep, Noah wins his mana crypt roll. He draws and plays an island. He casts his other commander, Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. It enters as a copy of Krark. Noah ends his turn. During his upkeep, Steven wins his mana crypt roll. He draws and plays a swamp. Steven passes. During his upkeep, Zack loses his mana crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and taps his talisman to help cast his other commander, Timna the Weaver. He moves to combat and attacks Noah with Krom and Steven with the rest. They both take it and in his second main phase, Zack pays two and draws two through Timna. He plays a command tower and passes to Dante. Dante draws and casts his other commander as well, Thrasios, Triton Hero. It enters, Kodama triggers, and Dante puts Biomancer's Familiar onto the battlefield. Dante passes. At the end of Dante's turn, Noah casts Pyroblast, targeting Krom. Both quirks trigger, Noah wins his first flip, copying Pyroblast, targeting Kennen. In response, Dante flashes in Endurance. Krom triggers and Zack draws. It enters and Kodama and Endurance trigger. Dante has Zack put his graveyard onto the bottom of his library. Then Kodama resolves and he puts Basalt Monolith onto the battlefield. With Kennen and Thrasios on the battlefield, this is a huge problem. Dante taps Basalt for 4 through Kennen. He activates the untap ability of Basalt. In response, Steven casts Pyroblast, targeting Kennen. In response, Dante taps his Mox Amber 4-2 through Kennen to help activate the untap ability of Basalt again. In response, Steven taps his Mana Confluence to help cast Lightning Bolt, targeting Kennen. Krom triggers and Zack draws. Unfortunately, Dante is out of answers and Kennen dies. Basalt untaps, Pyroblast fizzles, Dante floats mana, Basalt untaps again, and then Dante activates Thrasios, scrying one and revealing a green sun zenith into his hand. Finally, the second quirk trigger resolves, Noah wins the flip and copies Pyroblast, targeting Thrasios. Then Pyroblast destroys both Krom and Thrasios. The turn finally moves to Noah. During his upkeep, Noah loses his mana crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and casts Heat Shimmer, targeting Sakashima. Krark and Sakashima trigger. Noah loses his first flip and wins his second, copying and bouncing Heat Shimmer. In response, Steven casts Imp's Mischief, targeting Heat Shimmer. Steven changes the target of Heat Shimmer to his own Rograk and loses 3 life. Then Heat Shimmer resolves and Noah creates a copy of Rograk. Noah casts Gamble, Krark and Sakashima trigger. Noah wins a flip and Gamble copies. He fetches up a card into his hand and randomly discards Heat Shimmer. Noah loses his second flip and returns Gamble back to his hand. Noah pays 2 life to cast Jataxian Probe, targeting Zack. Krark and Sakashima trigger. In response, Zack casts Intuition. He fetches up a Dress Down, Underworld Breach, and a Savine's Reclamation. Steven gives him Dress Down. With the trigger still on the stack, Zack exiles Simeon Spirit Guide from his hand and adds a red. He flashes in a Dress Down. It enters and Zack draws. Noah sighs and resolves his triggers. He wins his first flip, copying Probe, targeting Steven. He looks at Steven's hand and draws a card. He wins his second flip, copying Probe, targeting Dante. He looks at Dante's hand and draws a card. Finally, the original resolves and he looks at Zack's hand and draws a card. Noah plays a Flooded Strand for turn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He casts Grape Shot with a Storm Count of 7 with the copies targeting Ranger Captain, Biomancer's Familiar, Rograk, and Zack for 1 to send a message. The creatures die and Noah passes. At the end of Noah's turn, his copy of Rograk dies and Zack sacrifices Dress Down. During his upkeep, Steven wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays an Arid Mesa. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Blood Crypt onto the battlefield untapped, paying 2 life. He activates Witch Claw, giving it to Dante and fetching up a card into his hand. He casts Cabal Ritual with Threshold, adding 5 black. He casts Jessica's Will, targeting Zack. He holds priority and taps his Mana Confluence to help cast Reiterate with Buyback, targeting Jessica's Will. This is an infinite mana combo, so in response, Zack has Fierce Guardianship for its alternate cost, targeting Jessica's will. Zack finally remembers his channeler trigger, and he surveils one, putting Tarnished Citadel into his graveyard. Jessica's will is countered, and reiterate fizzles. With nothing else to do, Steven passes to Zack. During his upkeep, Zack wins his mana crypt roll. He draws and casts Imperial Seal. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. He moves to combat and attacks Steven with Timna and Noah with his channeler, which now has Delirium. They both take it and Zack gains 2 life. In his second main phase, Zack pays 2 life and draws 2 cards through Timna. He casts a Mox Diamond, discarding Windswept Heath. He taps his Talisman to cast Esper Sentinel. Zack casts Thassa's Oracle. It resolves and with the ETB on the stack, Zack casts Tainted Pact. In response, Noah casts Mind Break Trap for its alternate cost, targeting Pact. Krark, Sakashima, and Esper Sentinel all trigger. In response, Zack taps his talisman to cast Mystical Tutor. 
He fetches up a Pact of Negation onto the top of his library. Then Esper Sentinel resolves and Zack draws. With the trigger still on the stack, Zack casts Pact of Negation targeting Mindbreak Trap. Trap is countered and now it is up to the Gods of Luck to not have a Krark or Sakashima trigger copy that Mindbreak. Noah rolls and loses his first trigger. He rolls his second and loses again. <laughs> Zack cheers as luck appears to be on his side tonight. So, Noah casts Pact of Negation targeting Tainted Pact. Zack cannot believe his luck and Krark and Sakashima trigger. Noah wins his first roll, copying Pact, targeting Pact. He wins his second, copying again and targeting Pact. Tainted Pact is countered and the other two Pact of Negations fizzle and then Thassa's Oracle's trigger finally resolves. Zack looks at the top two cards and puts them both on bottom. After a valiant fight, Zack gives the turn to Dante. Dante draws and starts off his turn by casting Time Twister. Esper triggers and Zack draws. Each player then shuffles their hand and graveyard into their library and draws seven. He plays a Wooded Foothills for turn. Kodama triggers and Dante puts a Scalding Tarn onto the battlefield. He cracks his Wooded Foothills, pays a life, and fetches up a Breeding Pool onto the battlefield untapped, paying two life. Kodama triggers and he puts an Island onto the battlefield. He cracks his Scalding Tarn, pays a life, and fetches up an island onto the battlefield. Kodama triggers and he declines to put anything in. He moves to combat and attacks Steven with Kodama. Steven takes it and Dante passes the turn. During his upkeep, Noah wins his Mana Crypt roll. He pays for his Pact of Negation and draws for turn. He plays a Scalding Tarn. He casts Mox Diamond. Esper triggers and Zack draws. Diamond resolves and Noah discards Bloodstained Mire. He cracks his Scalding Tarn, pays a life, and fetches up a mountain onto the battlefield. He casts Overmaster. Krark and Sakashima trigger. Noah wins his first roll and copies Overmaster. Holding priority, Noah casts Tybalt's Trickery, targeting his own Overmaster. Krark and Sakashima trigger again. In response, Dante casts Flusterstorm, with copies targeting both Overmasters and Tybalt's Trickery. All are countered, and then Noah wins his first flip. He copies Tybalt's Trickery, but it has no targets and fizzles. He loses his second flip, and then he wins his original Krark flip, creating a copy of Overmaster. The copy resolves, and Noah draws. With nothing else to do, Noah ends his turn. During his upkeep, Steven wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Mountain. He casts Sensei's Divining Top. Esper triggers and Steven pays. He casts Grim Tutor. He fetches up a card into his hand and loses 3 life. Steven passes. During his upkeep, Zack wins his Mana Crypt roll. He pays for his Pact of Negation and draws for turn. He casts Imperial Seal. In response, Dante casts Swan Song, targeting Imp Seal. Esper Sentinel triggers and Dante pays. Imp Seal is countered and Zack creates a 2-2 bird. Zack moves to combat and attacks Dante with Timna and Darcy and Steven with Sentinel and Thoracle. They both take it and Zack gains two life. In his second main phase, Timna triggers and Zack responds. He casts Vampiric Tutor. Channeler triggers and Zack surveils Scrubland into his graveyard. Then he fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. Timna's trigger resolves and Zack pays two and draws two through Timna. He plays an Urza Saga for turn, getting its first counter. He casts a Soul Ring. He taps his Talisman to help cast Toxic Deluge, paying six life. Zack wipes the entire board and passes to Dante. Dante draws and plays a Waterlogged Grove. He casts his commander, Thrasios. Dante ends his turn. During his upkeep, Noah loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays a Training Center. He recasts his commander, Krark the Thumbless. He casts Talisman of Creativity. He casts a Mystic Remora. Noah passes. At the end of Noah's turn, Steven activates his top, looking at and rearranging the top three. During his upkeep, Steven wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Luxury Sweep. He recasts Tevish. Remora triggers and Noah draws. He activates Tevish's first ability, creating two thralls. Steven ships the turn to Zack. During his upkeep, Zack loses his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and in his first main phase, Urza Saga gets another counter. He plays a Wooded Foothills for turn. He casts a Wishclaw Talisman. Remora triggers and Noah draws. Zack activates Wishclaw, giving it to Steven and fetching up a card into his hand. He cracks his Wooded Foothills, pays a life, and fetches up a Badlands onto the battlefield. He casts Peer into the Abyss. Remora triggers and Noah draws. Unfortunately, no one has an answer and Pierre resolves. Zack draws 36 cards and loses half of his life rounded up. Zack taps his talisman to cast Dark Ritual. Remora triggers and Noah draws. In response, Noah casts Muddle the Mixture, targeting Dark Ritual. Krark triggers, Noah wins the flip, copying Muddle, targeting Ritual. In response, Zack casts Pact of Negation, targeting the original Muddle. Remora triggers and Noah draws. Pack counters Muddle, and with the copy on the stack, Zack casts Swan Song, targeting the copy. Remora triggers, and Noah draws again. Swan Song counters Muddle, and Noah creates a 2-2 bird. And then Dark Ritual resolves, adding 3 black. Zack casts Cabal Ritual with Threshold. Noah draws through Remora, and Zack adds 5 black. 
He casts an Arcane Signet, and Noah draw through Remora. Zack casts Dockside Extortionist. In response, Steven activates Top, drawing a card and putting Top on top. Then Dockside enters, and Zack creates 9 treasures. Zack casts Gamble, and Noah draw through Remora. He fetches up a card into his hand, and then randomly discards a Savine's Reclamation. He casts Ranger Captain of Eos. It resolves, and Zack fails to find a 1-drop. He cracks his Ranger Captain, silencing his opponents this turn. He casts Phantasmal Image. It enters as a copy of Dockside, creating 9 more treasures. He casts an overloaded Cyclonic Rift, Noah draws through Remora, Dante floats mana, and then his opponents bounce their non-land permanents. Zack moves to a second main phase, fizzling Dante's mana. He casts Underworld Breach. He casts Brain Freeze, with all copies targeting himself, milling the rest of his library. He escapes Thassa's Oracle from his graveyard. Thassa's Oracle enters, and Zack wins the game. And Cal gets to start us off. But Zane and Noah have pregame actions. Zane puts a Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling an offer you can't refuse. Apparently, he could refuse it. <laughs> and then Noah puts a Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling Mana Confluence. Cal draws and plays a Scalding Tarn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Tropical Island onto the battlefield. He casts a Lotus Petal and passes the turn. Sean draws and plays a Command Tower. He casts an Arbor Elf. He passes. At the end of Sean's turn, Zane casts a Vampiric Tutor. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. Zane draws and casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Jeweled Lotus. He casts his Commander, Malcolm, Keen Eyed Navigator. He casts Magda, Brazen Outlaw. With a huge start in the books, Zane ends his turn. Noah draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast a Mana Ball. He casts his Commander, Crock the Thumbless. Noah gives the turn to Cal. Cal draws and plays a Command Tower. He casts his own Malcolm, Keen Eyed Navigator. Cal passes. Sean draws and plays a Waterlogged Grove. He taps his Grove to help cast his Commander, Thrasios, Triton Hero. Sean ends his turn. During his upkeep, Zane wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and moves to combat. He attacks Noah with Malcolm and Magda. Magda triggers and Zane creates a treasure. Noah takes it and Malcolm triggers, creating another treasure. All through, Zane passes. Noah draws and plays an Ottawara, Soaring City. He casts his other commander, Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. It enters as a copy of Krark. Noah passes to Cal. Cal draws and moves to combat. He attacks Zane with Malcolm. Zane takes it and Malcolm triggers, creating a treasure. In his second main phase, Cal casts Professional Facebreaker. Cal ships the turn to Sean. Sean draws and plays a Scalding Tarn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Taiga onto the battlefield. He casts a Dockside Extortionist. It enters, and Sean creates four treasures. He taps his Waterlogged Grove to help cast a Devoted Druid. Sean passes. During his upkeep, Zane loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and casts his own Dockside Extortionist. It enters, and with a trigger on the stack, Sean cracks his treasures. Then Zane creates one lowly treasure, which feels extra bad. Zane attempts to move to combat and, in response, Sean uses his floating mana to help activate Thrasios. He scries one and reveals a volcanic island onto the battlefield tapped. Then Zane attacks Noah with Magda and Malcolm. Magda triggers and creates a treasure. Noah takes it and Malcolm triggers, creating another treasure. In a second main phase, Zane sacrifices five treasures to activate Magda. He fetches up a Bolus' Citadel onto the battlefield. He looks at the top card of his library. He pays 3 life to cast Necropotence off of the top of his library through Citadel, which is quite frankly a really fantastic card to hit. In response, Noah taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast Cyclonic Rift, targeting Bolus' Citadel. Krark at Sakashima Trigger. He loses his first flip, returning Rift to his hand. He wins his second flip, copying Rift, targeting Citadel. In response, Zane casts Fierce Guardianship for its alternate cost, targeting the copy of Cyclonic Rift. In response, Noah casts Mindbreak Trap for its alternate cost, targeting Necropotence and Fierce Guardianship. Krark and Sakashima Trigger. Noah loses both flips, returning Mindbreak Trap to his hand. He recasts Mindbreak Trap. Krark and Sakashima Trigger, Noah wins both, copying it two times with the same targets for each copy. With nothing else, Mindbreak Trap resolves, exiling Necro and Fierce, the copies fizzle, then the Cyclonic Rift copy resolves, bouncing Bolas' Zitadel back to Zane's hand. With his win attempt foiled by those pesky Krarks, Zane passes the turn. During his draw step, Noah takes a damage from his Mana Vault. He plays an Arid Mesa for turn. He taps his Ancient Doom to help cast Krark's Thumb. He cracks his Arid Mesa, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. Noah ends his turn. Cal draws and casts Keen Sense, targeting his Malcolm. He moves to combat and attacks Noah with Malcolm and Zane with Professional Facebreaker. Both take it and Malcolm, Facebreaker, and Keen Sense all trigger. Cal creates three treasures and draws a card. In his second main phase, Cal activates Facebreaker, sacrificing a treasure, exiling Wandering Archaic off of the top of his library. He casts Eternal Witness. It enters and Cal returns Scalding Tarn from his graveyard to his hand. He plays Scalding Tarn as his land for turn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a volcanic island onto the battlefield. All through, Cal ships the turn to Sean. 
Sean draws and casts Brainstorm. He draws three and puts two back on top. He casts Swift Reconfiguration, targeting his devoted druid. This is a big problem, so in response, Noah casts Cyclonic Rift, targeting devoted druid. Krark and Sakashima trigger. In response to the triggers, Sean floats a green with devoted druid. He activates devoted druid, putting a minus one minus one counter on it, untapping it. He then floats another green. Then the Krark triggers resolve. Noah flips two for each trigger through Krark's thumb. Noah selects bounce with the first trigger and then copy with the second. Then Devoted Druid bounces and Swift Reconfiguration fizzles. Next, Sean taps his waterlogged grope to help cast Kinnon, Bonder Prodigy. He follows it up with a Basalt Monolith. In response, Cal casts an offer you can't refuse. Basalt is countered and Sean creates two treasures. A mildly irritated Sean sacks a treasure for double green through Kinnon and recasts Devoted Druid. Sean finally ends his turn. During his upkeep, Zane loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays a Bloodstained Mire. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an underground sea onto the battlefield. He moves to combat and attacks Noah with Malcolm and Magda and Cal with Dockside. Magda triggers and Zane creates a treasure. They both take it, Malcolm triggers, and Zane creates two more treasures. In his second main phase, he recasts Bolas' Citadel. In response, Sean casts Force of Negation, exiling a blue card, countering and exiling Citadel. Thwarted again, Zane passes. During his draw step, Noah takes a damage from his Mana Vault. He moves to combat and attacks Zane with Sakashima. Zane takes it, and in his second main phase, Noah casts Light Up the Stage for its spectacle cost. Krark and Sakashima trigger. Noah double rolls and chooses Copy. It resolves, and Noah exiles Desperate Ritual and exiles Pyroblast off at the top of his library. His second Krark trigger resolves, Noah double rolls and chooses Copy again. Noah exiles Dualcaster Mage and exiles Varen, Voice of Duality. Then the original Light Up the Stage resolves, and Noah exiles Brainstorm and Springleaf Drum. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast Springleaf Drum. He casts Desperate Ritual from Exile. Kark and Sakashima trigger. Noah double rolls, chooses bounce, then double rolls and chooses copy. He adds three red. He recasts Desperate Ritual. Kark and Sakashima trigger. Noah double rolls, choosing copy, creating three red, then double rolls, choosing bounce, returning it to his hand. He casts Desperate Ritual again. He double rolls for both triggers, copies, and bounces, and adds three more red. He casts Veyran, Voice of Duality. He casts Brainstorm. Kark and Sakashima trigger twice through Veyran. Noah double rolls for all four, choosing to copy three times and bounce for one. He draws three and puts two back on top three times. He casts Chrome Mox in printing Brainstorm. He casts Solve the Equation. Kark and Sakashima trigger twice each. Noah double rolls, bouncing it. He double rolls, copying it. He fetches up a Strike It Rich into his hand. He double rolls, copying it. He fetches up a Gamble into his hand. He double rolls, copying it one last time. He fetches up a Brightstone Ritual into his hand. He casts Brightstone Ritual. Krark and Sakashima trigger twice each. Noah double rolls for all four, choosing to copy three times and bounce once. He adds 12 red. Noah casts Gamble. Krark and Sakashima each trigger twice. Noah double rolls, bouncing it. He double rolls, copying it. He fetches up a card into his hand and randomly discards a Desperate Ritual. He double rolls, copying it. He fetches up a card into his hand and randomly discards a Grape Shot. He double rolls one last time, copying it. He fetches up a card into his hand and then randomly discards a Remand. Noah casts Storm Kiln Artist. He casts Underworld Breach. He escapes Grape Shot from his graveyard with all copies targeting Zane. Storm Kiln Artist triggers and creates, like, a lot of treasures. Noah then presents a loop of casting Grape Shot, copying and bouncing it to his hand through Kark and Sakashima. If he gets unlucky and it ends up in his graveyard, he just escapes it and continues the chain. He does this over and over until the table is dead and Noah wins the game. Zack was able to hacky sack the longest and gets to start us off. But Rust has a pregame action and puts Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling Ruby Medallion. Zane draws a card for turn and plays a command tower. He casts Birds of Paradise. He casts Mox Diamond, discarding Mana Confluence. Zane passes the turn. Noah draws a card for turn and plays a Volcanic Island. He casts a Soul Ring. He follows up with an Arcane Signet. He ends his turn. Rust draws and plays a Mountain. He casts his Commander, Nora and the Wary. Rust passes to Mike. Mike draws and plays a Marsh Flats. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a plateau onto the battlefield. He casts Mox Diamond. Norn triggers and exiles. It enters and he discards a Plains. Mike ends his turn. At the end of Mike's turn, Norn triggers. In response, Zane casts a Vampiric Tutor. In response, Noah casts Brainstorm. He draws three and then puts two back on top. Vampiric Tutor then resolves and Zane fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. Norn then enters the battlefield and the turn moves to Zane. Zane draws and casts Hermit Druid. Norn triggers and exiles. Hermit Druid then resolves. Zane moves to his end step and Norn enters the battlefield. 
and this is the point when we're just going to let everyone assume that this is what happens at the end of every turn. The turn moves to Noah. Noah draws and plays a Shivan Reef. He casts Ruby Medallion. Norn triggers and exiles. Noah then casts his commander, Krark the Thumbless. Noah passes. Rush draws and plays a Mountain. He casts Sting Scourger. Norn triggers and exiles. Sting Scourger enters and bounces Hermit Druid back to Zane's hand. Rust moves to his end step and Norn triggers. In response, Mike casts a Braid, targeting Krark. Noah responds by casting Unsubstantiate, targeting a Braid. Krark triggers and Noah wins the flip. Before declaring targets, he makes a deal with Rust to use Sting Scourger to bounce Winota back to Mike's hand after he casts it. Rust agrees and Noah bounces Sting Scourger back to Rust's hand. Then the original copy of Unsubstantiate bounces a Braid back to Mike's hand. Norn then enters the battlefield and then turn moves to Mike. Mike draws and plays a City of Traitors. He casts Mogcatcher. Norn triggers and exiles. Mogcatcher resolves and Mike gives a turn to Zane. Zane draws, assesses the board, and passes the turn. Noah draws and plays an island. He casts his other commander, Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. Norn triggers and exiles. It enters as a copy of Krark the Thumbless. Noah moves to combat and attacks Zane with Krark. Zane takes it and Noah ends his turn. Rust draws and plays a Scalding Tarn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a mountain onto the battlefield. He casts Impact Tremors. Norn triggers and exiles. <laughs> the table grumbles and Impact Tremors resolves. Rust casts a Grindstone. He passes, Norn enters, and each opponent takes one from Impact Tremors. The turn moves to Mike. Mike draws and casts a Sarah Ascendant. Norn triggers and exiles. Mike moves to his end step and Norn triggers. In response, Zane casts Assassin's Trophy, targeting Sakashima. Noah responds by casting Muddle the Mixture, targeting Assassin's Trophy. Both Kark and Sakashima trigger. Noah loses his first flip, returning Muddle back to his hand. He then wins his second flip, creating a copy of Muddle the Mixture, targeting Assassin's Trophy. Assassin's Trophy is countered, Norn enters, deals one to each opponent, and the turn moves to Zane. Zane draws and starts off his turn by casting Dockside Extortionist. Norn triggers and exiles. Dockside enters and Zane creates six treasures. He casts his commander, Yggdras, Maelstrom Wielder. He follows it up with a Hermit Druid. With a table on high alert, he passes, Norn enters, and deals one to each opponent. Noah draws and casts Solve the Equation. Norn triggers and exiles. Krark and Sakashima both trigger. He wins the first flip, creating a copy of Solve the Equation. Noah fetches up a Jessica's Will into his hand. He then loses the second flip and returns Solve the Equation to his hand. Noah then casts Jessica's Will, targeting Mike. Krark and Sakashima trigger, and in response, Mike activates Monk Catcher. He fetches up a Dockside Extortionist onto the battlefield. Dockside triggers and creates seven treasures. With the triggers still on the stack, Mike casts a Braid, targeting Sakashima, killing it. Then Krark and Sakashima's trigger resolve, Noah loses the first flip, bouncing Jessica's Will back to his hand, and then he loses the second flip as well. Dismayed, Noah ends the turn, Norn enters, and then deals one to each opponent. Rust draws and plays a Great Furnace. He moves to combat and attacks Zane with Norn. Norn triggers and exiles. Rust then moves to his end step and Norn triggers. In response, Mike casts Swords to Plowshares, targeting Hermit Druid. Hermit Druid is exiled and Zane gains one life. Then Norn enters and deals one damage to each opponent. Mike draws and starts off his turn by casting Kiki Jiki, Mirror Breaker. Norn triggers and exiles. The table then braces for impact as Kiki Jiki resolves. Mike activates Kiki Jiki, targeting his Dockside Extortionist. He creates a token of Dockside with haste and creates six treasures. Mike then casts Zealous Conscripts. It enters and targets Kiki Jiki, untapping it. Mike then presents a loop of activating Kiki Jiki to create a token copy of Zealous Conscripts. The token enters and untaps Kiki Jiki. He creates 69,420 copies of Zealous Conscripts for each of his opponents and then attacks for the win and Noah gets to start us off. Noah draws a card for turn and plays a Misty Rainforest. He passes. Rust draws and plays an Arid Mesa. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a mountain onto the battlefield. He casts a Skull Clamp. He ends his turn. Mike draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He taps his Ancient Tomb to cast Ginger Brute. Mike moves to combat and attacks Zane with Ginger Brute. Zane takes the hit, and in his second main phase, Mike casts Phyrexian Walker. He gives the turn to Zane. Zane draws and starts off his turn by casting Lotus Petal. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts Talisman of Curiosity. He plays an Overgrown Tomb into play Untapped, paying two life. With a blazing fast start, he ends his turn. Noah draws and plays a Training Center. He passes. Rust draws and plays a Prismatic Vista. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a mountain onto the battlefield. He ends his turn. Mike draws and plays a Cavern of Souls, naming Goblin as it enters. He taps his Ancient Tomb to cast Goblin Rabble Master. He moves to combat, Rabble Master triggers, and creates a 1 1 Goblin with haste. He attacks Noah with his Goblin token and Ginger Brute. Noah takes it, and Mike ships his turn. During his upkeep, Zane loses his mana crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and plays a City of Brass. 
He taps the City of Brass and cracks his pedal to cast Necropotence. It resolves and Zane pays 15 life, exiling 15 cards. Zane moves to his end step and Necropotence triggers. In response, Noah cracks his Misty Rainforest, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. Zane then puts the exiled cards into his hand and discards to hand size, exiling the discarded cards. Noah draws and plays a Fiery Islet. He casts his commander, Krark the Thumbless. He ends the turn. Russ draws and plays a Great Furnace. He passes. Mike draws and moves to combat. Goblin Rival Master triggers and creates a 1-1 Goblin token with haste. He attacks Zane with everything. Goblin Rival Master triggers, getting plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn. Zane takes it, and in his second main phase, Mike plays an Ink Moth Nexus. He gives the turn to Zane. During his upkeep, Zane wins his Mana Crypt trigger. He skips his draw step due to Necropotence. He plays a Command Tower. He casts Lion's Eye Diamond. He follows it up with an Underworld Breach. In response, Noah casts Fierce Guardianship for its alternate cost. Quirk triggers, and Noah wins the flip, creating a copy of Fierce Guardianship targeting Underworld Breach as well. In response, Zane casts Manamorphose, adding a blue and a black mana to his pool and drawing a card. Zane then casts Tainted Pact. It resolves and he exiles cards until he finds an Autumn's Veil, putting it into his hand. Zane taps his Talisman to cast Autumn's Veil. It resolves and both copies of Fierce Guardianship fizzle. Then Underworld Breach resolves. Zane escapes Lotus Petal from his graveyard. In response, Russ casts Chaos Warp, targeting Underworld Breach. Chaos Warp resolves, Zane shuffles Underworld Breach into his library, and then he reveals a Dockside Extortionist off of the top of his library, putting it onto the battlefield. Everyone erupts, and Dockside creates four treasures. Zane then casts a Demonic Tutor. He fetches up a card into his hand. He casts Underworld Breach. He taps his City of Brass to cast Brain Freeze, with all copies targeting himself. Zane mills 33 cards. He activates Necropotence four times, paying four life, and exiling the last four cards of his library. He sacrifices Lion's Eye Diamond, discarding his hand, exiling the cards through Necropotence, and adds three blue. He then escapes Thassa's Oracle from his graveyard. It enters, triggers, and Zane wins the game. And Rust gets to start us off. But Mike has a pre-game action and puts Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling Alciot of Life's Bounty. Rust draws a card for turn and plays a Wooded Foothills. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a mountain onto the battlefield. He casts a Soul Ring. He follows up with a Tomb of Legends. It enters with a page counter, and Rust ships the turn. Mike draws and plays a Prismatic Vista. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Plains onto the battlefield. He casts Jeweled Lotus. He cracks his Lotus to help cast his commander, Winota, Joiner of Forces. He casts Mox Diamond, discarding Spectator Seating. Mike casts a Loyal Apprentice. The table groans, and it resolves. Mike moves to combat, and Apprentice triggers, creating a 1-1 Flying Thopter with haste. He attacks Zane with the Apprentice and the Thopter. Winota triggers, and Mike looks at the top six and fails to find. Zane takes it, and Mike, with an incredible turn one in the books, passes the turn. Zane draws and casts a Mana Crypt. He plays a Watery Grave into play untapped, paying two life. He casts Demonic Tutor. He fetches up a card into his hand and passes the turn. Noah draws and plays a Misty Rainforest. He passes. Russ draws and plays a Mountain. He casts Jessica's Will, targeting Noah, adding five red. He then casts Blasphemous Act. Mike cries, and Blasphemous Act resolves, wiping the table of all creatures. Russ then gives the turn to Mike. Mike draws and plays a City of Traitors. He casts Draneth Magistrate. He passes. At the end of Mike's turn, Noah cracks his Misty Rainforest, pays a life, and fetches up a Steam Vents onto the battlefield tapped. The turn then moves to Zane. During his upkeep, Zane wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Polluted Delta. He passes. Noah draws and plays a Shivan Reef. He casts Baral, Chief of Compliance. He ends the turn. Russ draws and casts a Mind Stone. He ends his turn. At the end of Russ's turn, Zane casts Vampiric Tutor. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. Mike draws and moves straight to combat. He attacks Zane with Draneth. Zane takes the hit, and in his second main phase, Mike casts Mog Catcher. He shifts the turn to Zane. During his upkeep, Zane loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and cracks his Polluted Delta, pays a life, and fetches up a Tropical Island onto the battlefield. He casts Coloring Ritual. In response, Russ activates his Mind Stone, sacrificing it and drawing a card. Russ then activates Tomb of Legends, removing a page counter and drawing a card. Coloring Ritual then resolves, wiping the board, and Zane adds six black. He casts Ad Nauseum. It resolves, and Zane reveals a Lightning Greaves, Imperial Seal, Bloodstained Mire, Lotus Petal, Chain of Vapor, Mana Vault, Fluster Storm, Wish Claw Talisman, Gemstone Caverns, Fate Stitcher, Underworld Breach, Mnemonic Betrayal, and a Lion's Eye Diamond, deciding to stop there. Zane casts Lion's Eye Diamond. He casts Lotus Petal. He plays a Bloodstained Mire. He casts Chrome Mox. It enters, and he imprints Dockside Extortionist. Zane cracks his Lotus Petal to cast Underworld Breach. He cracks his LED, discarding his hand and adding three black. He escapes LED from his graveyard. 
He cracks LED, adding three blue. He escapes Demonic Tutor. He fetches up a card into his hand. Zane then casts Brain Freeze with all copies targeting himself, milling 27 cards. Zane escapes LED once again. He cracks it for three blue. He casts Thassa's Oracle. It enters, and with the trigger on the stack, he escapes Demonic Consultation. Consultation resolves, he names Norn the Wary, and exiles his deck. Thassa's Oracle's trigger resolves, and Zane wins the game. Zack wins the Blindfolded Drawing Challenge and gets to start us off. Zack draws a card for turn and plays the City of Brass. He casts a Chrome Mox, imprinting Necropotence. He exiles Simeon's Spirit Guide from his hand for red and casts a turn one, Wheel of Fortune. Everyone groans as their awesome starters are now being thrown away. Everyone discards a hand, with Noah notably discarding Dakmore Salvage, and then everyone draws a fresh seven. Zack casts a Lotus Petal and passes the turn. Noah draws a card for turn and plays a Land of War Wastes. He taps his Land of War Wastes to help cast an Allosaurus Shepherd. Noah passes. Lincoln draws and plays an Exotic Orchard. He gives the turn to Bailey. Bailey draws and plays an Arid Mesa. He ends his turn. Zack draws and plays a Command Tower. He casts an Arcane Signet. He cracks his pedal and taps his City of Brass to help cast his commander, Timna the Weaver. Zack passes. Noah draws and plays a Swamp. He casts a Demonic Tutor. He fetches up a card into his hand. He casts a Mana Crypt and ships the turn to Lincoln. Lincoln draws and plays a Scalding Tarn. He cracks it and pays a life. In response, Bailey cracks his Arid Mesa, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. Then Lincoln fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He casts a Dothy Voidwalker and gives the turn to Bailey. Bailey draws and plays a mountain. He passes. Zack draws and moves the combat. He attacks Noah with Timna. Noah takes it and Zack gains two life. In his second main phase, Zack pays a life and draws a card through Timna. He plays a Volcanic Island and passes the turn to Noah. During his upkeep, Noah loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays a Cavern of Souls, naming Frog as it enters. He casts a News Constrictor. Noah passes. Lincoln draws and plays an island. He casts his commander, Lazab the Multifarious. In enters, and Lincoln surveils one, leaving it on top. He passes. At the end of Lincoln's turn, Bailey casts Unsubstantiate, targeting Noah's news constrictor. Constrictor bounces, and Unsubstantiate is exiled with a Void counter on it through Dothy Voidwalker. The turn moves to Bailey. Bailey draws and plays a Shatter Skull, the Hammer Pass, into play untapped, paying three life. He casts a Ruby Medallion. He casts his commander, Krark the Thumbless. Bailey ends his turn. Zack draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast his other commander, Krom, Ludovic's Opus. He moves to combat and attacks Noah with Timna and Lincoln with Krom. They both take it and Zack gains two life. In his second main phase, he pays two and draws two through Timna. He casts an Esper Sentinel. Zack passes to Noah. At the end of Zack's turn, Noah casts Tainted Pact. Esper Sentinel triggers and Noah pays. Tainted Pact resolves and Noah exiles from the top of his library until he puts an abrupt decay into his hand. Tainted Pact is then exiled with a Void Counter and the turn moves to Noah. During his upkeep, Noah wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws, takes no actions, and passes. At the end of Noah's turn, Lincoln casts Entomb. Esper triggers and Zack draws. Entomb resolves and Lincoln fetches up a Gingitaxis Core Augur into his graveyard. The table breaks into a sweat and Lincoln follows up by cracking his Dothy Voidwalker to cast Tainted Pact for free. He exiles from his library until he puts Necromancy into his hand. The turn moves to Lincoln. Lincoln draws and plays a Polluted Delta. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Watery Grave into play untapped, paying two life. He casts Necromancy, targeting Jinja Taxis in his graveyard. Esper triggers and Zack draws. Necromancy resolves and Jinja Taxis enters the battlefield. Lincoln attempts to move through steps and phases, but in response, Noah casts Abrupt Decay, targeting Necromancy. Necromancy is destroyed and Jinja Taxis is sacrificed. Still in his main phase, Lincoln casts Reanimate, targeting Jinja Taxis again. In response, Bailey casts Force of Will, exiling a blue card and paying one life. Quark triggers, Bailey wins the flip, and copies Force of Will, targeting Reanimate. Reanimate is countered, and Lincoln passes the turn. Bailey draws and casts a Storm Kiln Artist. Bailey passes. Zack draws and plays a Morphic Pool. He casts a Mox Diamond, discarding Steam Vents. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast Ristic Study. He moves to combat and attacks Noah with Timna and Lincoln with Krom. They both take it, and Zack gains two. In his second main phase, he pays two and draws two through Timna. He casts a Mana Vault. He passes, discarding to hand size. During his upkeep, Noah loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and casts its commander, the Gitrog Monster. Ristic triggers and Zack draws. The Frog resolves and Noah ends his turn. Lincoln draws, takes no actions, and passes. Bailey draws and starts off his turn by casting Twin Flame, targeting his Stormkiln Artist. Krark, Stormkiln, Esper, and Ristic all trigger. 
Zack draws off of Ristic and Esper, Bailey creates a treasure off of Stormkiln, and then he wins his Kark Flip, copying Twin Flame, also targeting Stormkiln. Stormkiln triggers, and Bailey creates another treasure. The copy resolves, and Bailey creates a token of Stormkiln. With the original spell on the stack, Lincoln activates Lazav, having it become a copy of Dothi Voidwalker. Then the original Twin Flame resolves, Bailey creates another copy of Stormkiln, and Twin Flame is exiled with a Void Counter. Next, Bailey cast Overmaster. Kark, three Stormkilns, and Ristic all trigger. Zack draws through Ristic, Bailey creates three treasures, and with the Kark trigger still on the stack, Zack hard casts Mental Misstep, countering the original Overmaster. Then Bailey wins his Kark flip, copying Overmaster. Stormkilns trigger again, and Bailey creates three more treasures. Overmaster resolves, and he draws a card. Next, Bailey casts his other commander, Sakashima of a Thousand Faces, paying the Ristic tax. It enters as a copy of Kark. He casts Snap, targeting the Gitrog monster. Kark, Sakashima, three Storm Kilns, and Ristic all trigger. He pays for Ristic, creates three treasures, loses his first flip, returns Snap to his hand, and then loses his second flip as well. He casts Snap again, targeting the Gitrog monster. Kark, Sakashima, three Storm Kilns, and Ristic all trigger again. Zack draws through Ristic, and Bailey creates three treasures. Then he wins his Sakashima flip, copying Snap, targeting Krom. Storm Kilns trigger, and Bailey creates three treasures. He floats mana, then Snap resolves, bounces Krom, then he untaps two lands. He then wins his Quark flip and copies Snap again, targeting Timna this time. Storm Kilns trigger, and Bailey creates three more treasures. He floats mana, then Snap resolves, bouncing Timna, and he untaps two lands. He then floats mana again, the original Snap resolves, Gitrog bounces, and Bailey untaps two more lands. Next, Bailey casts Mystical Tutor. Kark, Sakashima, Storm Kilns, and Ristic all trigger yet again. Bailey pays for Ristic, and he creates three treasures through Storm Kiln. He wins his Sakashima flip, copies Mystical Tutor, triggers Storm Kiln, and creates three more treasures. Mystical Tutor resolves, and he fetches up a Jeska's Will onto the top of his library. He then wins his Kark flip, copies Mystical Tutor, creates three more treasures, and fetches Jeska's Will again. The original resolves, and he fetches Jeska's Will again, with Mystical Tutor getting exiled with a Void Counter on it. Like, I mean, he didn't actually do that three times, but we all knew what he was trying to do. Kark's existence is suffering, and we are all paying for it. Finished up, Bailey passes the turn. At the end of Bailey's turn, he sacrifices his Storm Kilns. Still in the end step, Zack flashes in, a dress down, drawing a card as it enters. Zack draws and casts a Mox Opal. He casts Intuition. He fetches up a Zavine's Reclamation, Underworld Breach, and a Lion's Eye Diamond. Noah gives him LED, with the others going to his graveyard, notably not in exile through Dothi because Dressdown is on the battlefield. Zack casts Dark Ritual, adding three black. He casts Lion's Eye Diamond. He plays a Mana Confluence for turn. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help flashback Savine's Reclamation, returning Underworld Breach and Lotus Petal from his graveyard to the battlefield. He escapes Intuition, targeting Noah again. In response, Lincoln casts Force of Negation, exiling a blue card, targeting Intuition. Ristic and Esper trigger, Zack draws through Esper, and Lincoln pays for Ristic. In response, Zack casts Spell Pierce, targeting Force of Negation. Lincoln responds with a Spell Pierce of his own, targeting Zack's Spell Pierce. Ristic triggers, and Zack draws. Spell Pierce resolves, Zack pays two, then Zack's Spell Pierce resolves, countering Force of Negation, and then Intuition resolves. Zack reveals a Brain Freeze, Gamble, and a Windfall. Noah gives Zack Brain Freeze. Zack casts Silence, locking out his opponents. He cracks his LED, discarding his hand, adding three blue. He escapes Brain Freeze with all copies targeting himself. He escapes LED from his graveyard. He cracks it for three blue. He escapes Brain Freeze again, milling all but the last three cards of his library. He escapes Brainstorm. He draws three and puts two back on top. He escapes LED again from his graveyard. He cracks it for three blue. He escapes Chain of Vapor, bouncing his own Dress Down back to his hand. He escapes LED. He cracks it, discarding Dress Down into exile with a Void Counter because Lincoln's Lazav is now back online. He escapes Thassa's Oracle. Thassa's Oracle's trigger resolves, and Zack wins the game. Alex wins the Don't Wipe Your Mouth Challenge and gets to start us off. Alex draws a card for turn and plays a remote farm into play tapped. He casts an Urza's Bobble. He cracks his bobble, looking at a random card in Bailey's hand. Alex passes. During Marcus's upkeep, Alex draws the Urza's Bobble. Marcus draws and plays a Scalding Tarn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a snow-covered mountain onto the battlefield. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Thousand-Year Elixir. Marcus ends his turn. Mike draws and plays a Misty Rainforest. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He casts his commander, Rograk, son of Rogar. He casts a Jeweled Lotus. He casts a Mystic Remora. He cracks his Lotus and casts his other commander, Malcolm, Keen-Eyed Navigator. With everyone stunned at Mike's turn one, Mike passes. 
Bailey draws and plays a Volcanic Island. He passes. Alex draws and plays a Plains. He casts a Scarecrone. Alex shifts the turn to Marcus. During his upkeep, Marcus wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Snow-Covered Mountain. He casts his Commander, Krenko, Mob Boss. He activates Krenko due to Thousand Year Elixir and creates a Goblin. Marcus passes. During his upkeep, Mike pays to keep his Remora. He draws and moves to combat. He attacks Bailey with Malcolm. Bailey takes it and Malcolm triggers. Mike creates a treasure and in his second main phase, he plays an island. He casts a Lotus Petal. Mike ends his turn. Bailey draws and plays a Cephalid Colosseum for turn. He taps his Cephalid Colosseum to cast Desperate Ritual. Remora triggers and Mike draws. Ritual resolves and Bailey adds three red. He casts his commander, Kark the Thumbless. He casts Strike at Rich. Remora triggers and Mike draws. Kark triggers, Bailey wins the flip, copying Strike at Rich. Both resolves and Bailey creates two treasures. All finished up, Bailey passes to Alex. Alex draws and plays a Scorch Ruins, sacrificing a remote farm and a plains. He casts a Grim Monolith. Remora triggers and Mike draws. He casts a Mystic Forge and Mike draws through Remora. He looks at the top card of his library through Mystic Forge. He activates Forge, paying a life and exiling the top card of his library. He casts a Skull Clamp. Remora triggers and Mike draws. With nothing else, Alex passes. During his upkeep, Marcus loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and plays a Castle Aaron Breath. He casts Mana Echoes. Remora triggers and Mike draws. Everyone knows this is a big problem, but with no answers, it resolves. Marcus activates Krenko, creating two goblins. Mana Echoes triggers and he creates eight, yes you heard that right, eight colorless mana. He activates Thousand Year Elixir, untapping Krenko. He casts Tangle Wire. Everyone groans and Remora triggers. In response, Marcus activates Krenko, creating four goblins. Mana Echoes triggers and adds 32 colorless mana. Then Marcus pays for Remora. All through, Marcus passes to Mike. At the end of Marcus's turn, Mike casts Mystical Tutor. He fetches up a Pact of Negation onto the top of his library. Still in the end step, Mike casts Chain of Vapor, targeting Tanglewire. In response, Marcus casts Deflecting Swat for its alternate cost, targeting Chain of Vapor. Remora triggers and Mike draws again. Mike sighs and Swat resolves. Marcus redirects Chain of Vapor to Mystic Forge. Forge bounces and Alex does not continue the chain. The turn moves to Mike. During his upkeep, Mike lets his Mystic Remora die. Also in his upkeep, he taps his permanence through Tanglewire. He draws and plays a City of Brass for turn. He moves to combat and attacks Bailey with Malcolm. Bailey takes it, Malcolm triggers, and Mike creates a treasure. Mike passes. At the end of Mike's turn, Bailey casts Impulse. Quark triggers, he wins the flip, and copies Impulse. He looks at the top four, puts one into his hand, and bottoms the rest. Then he does it again. Mike then discards the hand size. During his upkeep, Bailey taps his permanence through Tanglewire. He draws and plays a Mana Confluence. With nothing else to do, he passes. During Alex's upkeep, Tanglewire triggers. In response, Alex floats four mana through his Scorched Ruins. Then Tanglewire resolves and he taps his permanence. Before moving to draw, he uses his floating mana to untap his Grim Monolith. He draws and plays a Cavern of Souls, naming Cleric as it enters. He recasts Mystic Forge. He looks at the top card of his library. He activates Forge, paying a life and exiling the top card. He casts a Chalice of the Void off of the top of his library through Mystic Forge, where X equals zero. He looks at the top of his library again. He casts Lotus Petal off of the top of his library to dig deeper to find an answer. Chalice of the Void triggers and Lotus Petal is countered. Unfortunately, he could not find what he needed and Alex passes the turn. During his upkeep, Marcus wins his Mana Crypt roll. He removes a counter from Tanglewire, then taps his permanence through Tanglewire. He draws and casts Dire Fleet Daredevil. It enters and he exiles Impulse from Bailey's Graveyard. He activates Krenko, creating 8 Goblins. Mana Echoes triggers and Marcus creates 128 colorless mana. He casts Impulse from Exile using his colorless as mana of any color through Dire Fleet. He looks at the top 4, puts one into his hand, and the rest on the bottom. He casts Shared Animosity, and the entire table groans. He activates Thousand Year Elixir, untapping Krinko. He attacks Bailey with 4 goblins. Shared Animosity triggers and his creatures get plus 3 plus 0. Bailey takes 16, and Marcus passes the turn. During his upkeep, Mike taps his permanence through Tanglewire. He draws and plays a Fiery Islet. He taps his City of Brass to help cast Glenhorn Buccaneer. In response, Marcus casts Pyroblast, destroying Mike's Malcolm. Then Glenhorn resolves. Mike attacks Bailey with Glenhorn. Bailey takes it, and Mike, plans disrupted, passes the turn. During his upkeep, Bailey taps his permanence through Tanglewire. He draws and plays a Shatter Skull to hammer pass into play untapped, paying 3 life. He casts Brightstone Ritual. Like seriously, if all the cards to have available, this one could not have been better. Quark triggers, and in response, Mike casts Daze, returning an island to his hand, targeting Brightstone. Bailey pays for Daze, and then Quark's trigger resolves. Bailey wins the flip and copies Brightstone. He then adds 34 red mana. He flashes back Strike It Rich. Quark triggers and he wins the flip and copies it. Bailey creates two treasures. 
Bailey casts Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. It enters as a copy of Krark. Bailey casts Underworld Breach. He holds priority and casts Reman, targeting his Breach in order to keep drawing cards. Krark and Sakashima trigger. He wins his first flip and creates a copy. Then the copy resolves and returns Breach to his hand, drawing a card. Then he wins his second flip and targets the original copy of Remand. Remand is countered, bounces back to his hand, and he draws a card. Unfortunately, out of blue mana and with nothing else to cast that has an impact, Bailey regretfully passes the turn. During his upkeep, Alex taps his permanence through Tanglewire. In his upkeep, he looks at the top card of his library through Mystic Forge. He activates Forge, paying a life, and exiling the top card. He draws and casts Arcbound Ravager. He sacrifices Chalice of the Void to Ravager, giving it a plus one plus one counter. He sacrifices Grim Monolith, giving Ravager another 1-1 one, one counter. He casts Altar of Dementia. He sacrifices his Scarecrow to Altar of Dementia, milling 1. He equips his Skull Clamp to his Ravager. He then sacks his Ravager to the Altar of Dementia. Skull Clamp triggers, and Alex draws 2. Then he mills 4. With nothing else, man petering out, Alex passes. At the end of Alex's turn, Marcus activates Krinko, creating 16 goblins. During his upkeep, Marcus wins his Mana Crypt roll. He removes a counter from Tanglewire, then taps his permanence through Tanglewire. He draws and moves straight to combat. He attacks Bailey and Alex with 10 goblins and Mike with 9 goblins. Each goblin gets plus 28 plus 0 through shared animosity. They all take it, and Marcus wins the game. Sean wins the 4 Curious Control Pod subgame challenge and gets to start us off. Sean draws a card for turn and casts a Mox Diamond, discarding a Volcanic Island. He plays a Scalding Tarn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Tropical Island onto the battlefield. He casts his commander, Thrasios, Triton Hero. He passes. Zane draws a card for turn and plays a Verdant Catacombs. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He casts Soul Ring. He exiles Simeon Spirit Guide from his hand and adds a red. He casts Lightning Rig Crew. He passes. Noah draws and plays a City of Brass. He casts Mox Diamond, discarding Cascade Bluffs. He taps the City of Brass to help cast Soul Ring. He casts his commander, Krark the Thumbless. He ships the turn. Cal draws and plays a Spire of Industry. He also casts Mox Diamond, discarding Tropical Island. Zane suddenly feels very left out, and Cal casts Lanawar Elves. He passes. Sean draws and plays a Tundra. He casts Sylvan Library. All finished up, he ships the turn to Zane. During Zane's upkeep, Sean casts Force of Vigor for its alternate cost, exiling a green card, targeting both Zane's and Noah's Soul Rings. In response, Zane hard casts Fierce Guardianship, targeting Force of Vigor. In response, Sean casts Veil of Summer. Veil resolves, and Sean draws. Fierce fizzles, and Force of Vigor resolves, destroying both Soul Rings. Zane draws, curses Sean's name, takes no other actions, and gives the turn to Noah. Noah draws, and also curses Sean's name. He taps his City of Brass to help cast Krark's Thumb. He passes. Cal draws and casts Ristic Study. Cal passes. During his draw step, Sean draws two extra through Sylvan Library, paying eight life to keep them both. He plays a Waterlog Grove for turn. He casts a Mana Crypt, paying for Ristic. Sean passes. At the end of Sean's turn, Zane activates Lightning Rig Crew, and each opponent takes one. The turn moves to Zane. Zane draws and casts a Mana Vault. Ristic triggers, and Cal draws. All finished up, Zane passes. Noah draws, takes no actions, and passes. Cal draws and plays a Gemstone Caverns. He taps his Spire of Industry to help cast Kinnon, Bonder Prodigy. He casts his commander, Malcolm, Keen-Eyed Navigator. He passes. At the end of Cal's turn, Sean activates Thrasios, scrying one and revealing an Eldritch Evolution into his hand. The turn moves to Sean. During his upkeep, Sean loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. During his draw step, Sean draws two extra through Sylvan Library, paying four life to keep one extra. He casts Finehorn Elves. He passes. At the end of Sean's turn, Zane activates Lightning Rig Crew, and each opponent takes one. Zane draws and casts his commander, Malcolm, Keen-Eyed Navigator. Lightning Rig Crew and Ristic Trigger. Zane pays for Ristic and, holding priority, activates Lightning Rig Crew, pinging each opponent for one. In response, Sean casts Swords to Plowshares, targeting Lightning Rig Crew. Ristic Triggers and Cal draws. Swords resolves and Lightning Rig Crew is exiled. Zane passes. At the end of Zane's turn, Noah casts Lightning Bolt, targeting Kinnon. Krark and Ristic Trigger. Noah taps the City of Brass to help pay for Ristic. Noah flips twice through Krark's thumb, ignoring one flip. He flips two tails, curses Sean's name again for some reason no one understands, and then the turn moves to Noah. Noah draws and casts Lightning Bolt, again targeting Kinnon. Krark and Ristic Trigger. Cal draws and Noah flips for Krark. He double flips and chooses Copy. Krark copies Lightning Bolt, and the Copy targets Cal's Malcolm. Both Lightning Bolts resolve, and Malcolm and Kinnon are destroyed. Noah passes. Cal draws and casts a Jeweled Lotus. He cracks it to help cast his commander, Malcolm, Keen-Eyed Navigator. He casts Finehorn Elves. He taps his Spire of Industry to help cast Mystic Remora. In response, Sean casts Delay, targeting Mystic Remora. Ristic triggers, and Sean pays. Delay resolves, countering and exiling Mystic Remora with three time counters on it. Cal ends his turn. During his upkeep, Sean wins his Mana Crypt roll. 
During his draw step, Sean draws two extra through Sylvan Library, putting two back on top. He casts Ranger Captain of Eos, paying for Ristic. It enters, and he fetches up an Esper Sentinel into his hand. He taps his Flooded Grove to help cast Eldritch Evolution, sacrificing Ranger Captain as an additional cost. Ristic triggers, and Cal draws. In response, Noah casts Fierce Guardianship for its alternate cost, targeting Eldritch Evolution. Krark and Ristic trigger. Noah taps the City of Brass to help pay for Ristic. Then Noah flips twice, choosing heads. Krark copies his Fierce, and he targets Eldritch. In response, Sean casts Deflecting Swat for its alternate cost, targeting the Fierce Guardianship copy. Ristic triggers, and Cal draws. Swat resolves, redirecting the Fierce copy to the original Fierce Guardianship. Fierce counters Fierce, and Eldritch resolves. Sean fetches up a Seedborn Muse onto the battlefield. The table knows this is trouble, and Sean passes the turn. Sean untaps with Zane through Seedborn. During his draw step, Zane takes a damage through his Mana Vault. He moves to combat and attacks Sean with Malcolm. Sean takes it, and Malcolm triggers, creating a treasure. Zane passes. At the end of Zane's turn, Sean activates Thrasios, scrying one and revealing a Flusterstorm into his hand. Sean untaps with Noah. Noah draws and casts Gamble, Krark and Ristic trigger. In response to both, Sean activates Thrasios, scrying one and revealing a crop rotation into his hand. Cal draws off of Ristic and Noah flips twice, losing both flips. Noah taps the City of Brass to cast Gamble again. Krark and Ristic trigger. Cal draws off of Ristic and Noah flips twice, choosing copy this time. His copy resolves and he fetches up a card into his hand and then randomly discards a Heat Shimmer. Then the original resolves and he fetches up another card into hand and then randomly discards a Submerge. With nothing else, Noah passes the turn. During his upkeep, Cal removes a Suspend counter from Mystic Remora. He draws and plays a Guidus Cradle. He casts Twin Flame, targeting Malcolm. He holds priority and exiles Simeon Spirit Guide from his hand, adding a red. He taps his Spire of Industry to help flash in a Dual Caster Mage. In response, Sean activates Thrasios, scrying one and revealing a Temple Garden onto the battlefield tapped. Then Dual Caster enters and targets Twin Flame. In response, Sean casts Lightning Bolt, targeting Dual Caster, paying for Ristic. Dual Caster is destroyed, and then the Dual Caster's trigger resolves, creating a copy of Twin Flame, targeting Finehorn Elves. Both Twin Flames resolve, and Cal creates a copy of both creatures, with his copy of Malcolm getting sacked immediately. Plans foiled, Cal attacks Sean with Malcolm. Sean takes it, and Malcolm triggers, creating a treasure. In his second main phase, he casts Ledger Shredder. Cal passes. At the end of Cal's turn, Zane casts Alchemist Retrieval, targeting his own Mana Vault. Ristic triggers, and Cal draws. Mana Vault is bounced, and the turn moves to Sean. During his upkeep, Sean loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. During his draw step, Sean draws two extra through Sylvan Library, putting two back on top. He plays an Island for turn. He casts Esper Sentinel, paying for Ristic. He casts his other commander, Bruce Tarl, Forish Herder. Ristic triggers, and Cal draws. Bruce Tarl enters and gives Seedborn Muse Double Strike and Lifelink until end of turn. He moves to combat and attacks Noah with Seedborn Muse. Noah takes it and Sean gains 4. Sean passes. Zane draws and immediately moves to combat. He attacks Sean with Malcolm. Sean takes it and Zane creates a treasure through Malcolm. In his second main phase, he recasts Mana Vault. Ristic and Esper trigger. Sean and Cal both draw and then Zane ships the turn. Noah draws and taps the City of Brass to help cast Dockside Extortionist. Ristic triggers and Cal draws. In response, Sean activates Thrasios, scrying one and revealing a worldly tutor into his hand. Then Dockside resolves and Noah creates nine treasures. He plays a Mana Confluence. He taps it to help cast his other commander, Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. Ristic and Ledger Shredder trigger. Cal draws off of Ristic and then connives from Ledger Shredder, discarding a Breeding Pool. In response to Sakashima, Sean activates Thrasios, scrying one and revealing a Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield tapped. Then Sakashima resolves and enters as a copy of Krark. Noah casts Geist Wave, targeting his own Dockside. Krark, Sakashima, Ristic, and Esper trigger. Sean draws off of Esper, then Noah pays for Ristic, and in response to both Krark triggers, Zane casts Ad Nauseam. Ristic and Esper trigger, and Sean and Cal draw. Then Ad Nauseam resolves. Zane reveals a Talisman of Indulgence, Cyclonic Rift, Mox Diamond, Mana Crypt, Swan Song, Professional Facebreaker, Tainted Pact, Phantasmal Image, Mox Opal, Diabolic Intent, Bloodstained Mire, Chrome Mox, Chain of Vapor, Imperial Seal, Demonic Consultation, Flooded Strand, Cabal Ritual, An Offer You Can't Refuse, Pyroblast, Polluted Delta, Gamble, Training Center, Felwar Stone, Misty Rainforest, Dark Ritual, Blood Crypt, Mistcast, Luxury Suite, and Appear Into the Abyss, deciding to stop there. With Geist Wave back on the stack, Sean casts Red Elemental Blast targeting Geist Wave. Ristic Triggers and Cal Draws. Red Blast counters the original Geist Wave. Then Noah double flips for Kark, choosing copy. Geist Wave is copied and targets Dockside. Dockside is bounced and Noah draws. Sakashima double rolls and Noah chooses copy again. Then Geist Wave is copied, Noah bounces his Mox Diamond, and then Noah draws again. He recasts Dockside, paying for Ristic. It enters and he creates seven treasures. 
He casts an overloaded Cyclonic Rift. Krark, Sakashima, and Rhystic trigger. Cal draws off of Rhystic and Noah double flips, choosing Copy. The Copy resolves, bouncing his opponent's non-land permanents. Then he double flips, both come up heads, so he copies it again. His opponent's non-land permanents are bounced, uh, again. <laughs> then the original Cyclonic Rift resolves, really sending the message that his opponent's non-land permits need to be in their hands. He recasts Mox Diamond, discarding a mountain. Unfortunately, he didn't draw the cards he needed and has to pass the turn. During his upkeep, Cal removes a suspend counter from Mystic Remora. He draws and plays an exotic orchard. He casts Chrome Mox, imprinting Snapcaster Mage. He casts Mox Diamond, discarding Ancient Tomb. He casts Finehorn Elves. He follows it up with Llanowar Elves. He recasts his commander, Malcolm, Keen Eyed Navigator. He taps his Fire of Industry to help recast Ledger Shredder. He passes, discarding to hand size. Sean draws and recasts his Mana Crypt. He casts Mox Diamond, discarding Verdant Catacombs. Ledger Shredder triggers and Cal Knives, discarding Professional Facebreaker, giving Ledger Shredder a plus one plus one counter. He plays an Emergence Zone. He casts Esper Sentinel. He recasts Seedborn Muse. He recasts his commander, Thrasios Triton Hero. He passes. Sean untaps with Zane through Seedborn Muse. Zane draws and casts Mox Diamond, discarding Bloodstained Mire. Esper triggers and Sean draws. He casts a Mana Crypt. Shredder triggers and Cal Knives, discarding Swan Song, giving Ledger Shredder a counter. He casts Mox Opal. He follows it up with a Phantasmal Image. It enters as a copy of Dockside Extortionist, creating seven treasures. He casts Mana Vault. He casts Chrome Mox, imprinting Imperial Seal. He casts Jeweled Lotus. He recasts his commander, Malcolm, Keen Eyed Navigator. He casts Glenhorn Buccaneer. In response, Sean activates Emergence Zone. In response, Zane casts Dark Ritual, adding three black. He casts Cabal Ritual with Threshold, adding five black. Then the Emergence Zone activation resolves. Sean flashes in a Training Grounds. In response, Zane casts Pyroblast, targeting Thrasios. In response, Sean pays two life to help cast Mental Misstep, targeting Pyroblast. In response, Zane casts Miscast, targeting Sean's Misstep. In response, Sean casts Worldly Tutor. In response, Zane casts Swan Song, targeting Training Grounds, which is still on the stack. In response, Sean casts Flusterstorm, with five copies targeting Pyroblast and the rest at Swan Song. In response, Zane casts an offer you can't refuse, targeting his own Swan Song. With nothing else, Swan Song is countered, Zane creates two treasures, Flusterstorm counters Pyroblast, Miscast counters Misstep, Worldly Tutor resolves, and Sean fetches up a Dockside Extortionist onto the top of his library. With Training Ground still on the stack, Zane casts an overloaded Cyclonic Rift. In response, Sean taps his Waterlog Grove to help cast Crop Rotation, sacrificing Waterlog Grove. In response, Zane casts Tainted Pact. It resolves and exiles from the top of his library until he reveals a Force of Will, putting it into his hand. He casts Force of Will, paying a life and exiling a blue card, targeting and countering Crop Rotation. Still in response to Cyclonic Rift, Sean activates Thrasios, scrying one and revealing a Dockside Extortionist into his hand. Then Cyclonic Rift resolves, bouncing his opponent's non-land permanents. Then Training Grounds resolves. With Glenhorn back on the stack, Sean flashes in a Mana Crypt. Then Glenhorn finally resolves. Sean asks Kalanoa if they actually wanted to, you know, help out at any point during that whole debacle, and they both shrug and said they didn't want to take all of his glory. Zane attacks Cal with Glenhorn. Cal takes it, and Zane creates a treasure through Malcolm. He presents a loop of activating Glenhorn, pinging his opponents, drawing and discarding, and creating treasures through Malcolm. He does this until the table is dead, and Zane wins the game. Mike wins the NyQuil Flavor Blind Taste Test and gets to start us off. But Noah has a pre-game action and puts Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling Ponder. Mike draws a card for turn and plays a plateau. He casts Esper Sentinel. He casts a Phyrexian Walker. Mike passes. Sean draws a card for turn and plays a Windswept Heath. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Tropical Island onto the battlefield. He casts Mox Diamond, discarding Beseju, who endures. Esper Sentinel triggers and Mike draws. Sean casts his commander, Thrasios, Triton Hero. Sean passes. Noah draws and plays a Training Center. He casts his commander, Krark the Thumbless. Noah ends his turn. Greg draws and plays a Morphic Pool. He casts Deathrite Shaman. He pays two life to cast a Taxian Probe, targeting Mike. Esper triggers and Mike draws. Greg looks at Mike's hand and draws a card. He casts a Mox Amber and gives the turn to Mike. Mike draws and plays a Naganjo, Seed of the Empire. He casts Grand Abolisher. Mike ships the turn to Sean. Sean draws and casts Llanowar Elves. He passes. Noah draws and starts off his turn by casting Rite of Flame. Krark and Esper trigger. Mike draws a card, then Krark resolves. Noah wins the flip, copying Rite of Flame. Then Noah adds four red. He casts his other commander, Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. It enters as a copy of Krark. All through, Noah ends his turn. Greg draws and plays a Marsh Flats. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Badlands onto the battlefield. He casts Sig, River Cutthroat. Greg gives a turn to Mike. 
Mike draws and plays a mountain. He casts Goblin Crater Maker. Mike passes. Sean draws and casts a Mystic Remora. Esper triggers and Sean pays. Remora resolves and Sean ends his turn. Noah draws, takes no actions, and passes. At the end of Noah's turn, Greg activates Deathrite Shaman, exiling Rite of Flame with each opponent losing two. Greg draws and plays an Underground Sea. He casts his Commander, File Smasher the Fierce. Greg passes. Mike draws, looks at Remora, and passes the turn. During his upkeep, Sean pays for his Mystic Remora. He draws, does nothing else, and passes. Noah draws and casts a Talisman of Creativity. Esper and Remora trigger and both draw. Noah ends his turn. At the end of Noah's turn, Greg activates Deathrite Shaman, exiling Jataxian Probe with each opponent losing two. Greg draws and plays an Exotic Orchard. He casts Keen Sense, targeting his Vile Smasher. Vile Smasher, Esper, and Remora all trigger. Sean draws, Greg pays for Esper, then rolls for Vile Smasher, dealing one to Sean. With Keen Sense still on the stack, Sean casts Chain of Vapor, targeting Vile Smasher. Esper triggers and Sean pays. In response, Greg casts Spell Pierce, targeting Chain. Remora triggers and Sean draws. Spell Pierce counters Chain of Vapor and Keen Sense resolves. Greg moves to combat and attacks Noah with Vile Smasher. Noah takes it and Keen Sense triggers. Greg draws a card and then passes the turn to Mike. At the end of Greg's turn, Mike flashes in an Avon Mind Sensor. Mike draws and plays a Plains. He casts Chrome Mox. Remora triggers and Sean draws. Chrome Mox resolves and Mike imprints Skyclave Apparition. He casts his commander, Winota, Joiner of Forces. He casts Ginger Brute. He moves to combat and attacks Greg with Mind Sensor, Phyrexian Walker, and Ginger Brute, and Noah with Goblin Crater Maker. Winota triggers four times. Mike looks at the top six and fails to find. He looks at the next six and then puts Ether Sworn Cannonist onto the battlefield tapped and attacking Greg. He looks at the next six and then puts Blade Historian onto the battlefield tapped and attacking Greg as well. He then looks at his final six and puts Recruiter of the Guard onto the battlefield tapped and attacking Greg. Recruiter triggers and Mike fetches up a Solitude into his hand. Greg blocks Ginger Brute with Sig and then he and Noah take the rest. All through, Mike passes. At the end of Mike's turn, Sig triggers and Greg draws. During his upkeep, Sean pays for his Remora. He draws and plays a Command Tower. He casts Wild Growth on his Command Tower. Esper triggers and Mike draws. All finished up, Sean passes, discarding to hand size. Noah draws and plays an Ottawara, Soaring City. He casts Archmage Emeritus. Noah attempts to move through phases, and in his second main phase, Greg activates Deathrite Shaman, exiling Forbidden Orchard, adding a red. He casts Flame Sweep. Vile Smasher, Esper, and Remora trigger. In response, Mike evokes Solitude, exiling a white card. It enters, exiles Vile Smasher, and Greg puts it into the command zone. Then Solitude is sacrificed. Then Sean and Mike draw a card, Greg rolls for Vile Smasher, and deals three to Noah. Then Flame Sweep resolves, dealing two to each creature. Mike then sighs as Noah passes the turn. At the end of Noah's turn, Sig triggers and Greg draws. Greg draws and plays a Command Tower. He casts Rashmi, Eternity's Crafter. In response, Sean casts Delay, countering and exiling Rashmi with three time counters on it. Next, Greg casts Mystic Remora. Sean's Remora triggers and he draws. Greg's Remora resolves and he passes the turn to Mike. Mike draws and plays a Blink Moth Nexus. He casts Sanctum Prelate. It enters and Mike names two. He casts a Dranith Magistrate. He moves to combat and attacks Greg with Winota and Blade Historian and Noah with Phyrexian Walker. Winota triggers, Mike looks at the top six and fails to find. Then Greg takes it and Mike passes the turn. During his upkeep, Sean pays for his Remora. He draws and plays a Savannah. He casts Devoted Druid. Sean gives the turn to Noah. Noah draws and casts Frantic Search. Both Remoras trigger and Greg and Sean draw. Frantic Search resolves, Noah draws two, discards two, and untaps three lands. Noah casts Dockside Extortionist. It enters and Noah creates seven treasures. Locked out by Draneth Magistrate, Noah passes to Greg. During his upkeep, Greg pays for his Remora. Also in his upkeep, he removes the time counter from Rashmi. He draws and plays a Watery Grave into play tapped. Greg passes. Mike draws and casts Shatter Skull Smashing, where X equals three, targeting Devoted Druid and Sig River Cutthroat. Both Remoras trigger and they both draw. Then Shatter Skull resolves. Mike attempts to move to combat and in response, Greg channels Ottawara, Soaring City, bouncing Blade Historian to Mike's hand. Then Mike attacks Greg with Winota, Phyrexian Walker, Sanctum Prelate, and Draneth Magistrate. Winota triggers, Mike looks at the top six, putting Brutal Cathar onto the battlefield tapped and attacking Greg. Brutal Cathar triggers, exiling Sean's Thrasios, with Sean choosing to put it into the command zone. Then Greg takes the damage and Mike passes to Sean. During his upkeep, Sean pays to keep his Remora. He draws, holds open mana, and passes the turn, discarding to hand size. During Noah's upkeep, day becomes night and Brutal Cathar transforms into Moonrage Brute. Noah draws, takes no actions, and passes the turn. During his upkeep, Greg pays for his Mystic Remora. Also in his upkeep, he removes the time counter from Rashmi. He draws and plays a Mana Confluence. Greg ends his turn. Mike draws and activates Blink Moth, turning it into a creature. He moves to combat and attacks Greg with Winota and Sean with Blink Moth, Phyrexian Walker, Moonrage Brute, Sanctum Prelate, and Draneth Magistrate. 
Winota triggers three times. Mike looks at the top six and puts Combat Celebrant onto the battlefield tapped in attacking Sean. He looks at the next six and fails to find. He then looks at the next six and puts Magus of the Moon onto the battlefield tapped in attacking Sean as well. Both declare no blocks, take it all, and Greg dies. In his second main phase, Mike casts Imperial Recruiter. It enters and Mike fetches up an Alciad of Life's Bounty into his hand. He casts Alciad of Life's Bounty. Finished up, Mike ends his turn. At the end of Mike's turn, Sean casts Force of Vigor, exiling a green card, targeting Alciad and Blink Moth Nexus. In response, Mike exiles Simeon Spirit Guide from his hand, adding a red. He activates Alciad, sacrificing it and giving Blink Moth protection from green until end of turn. Force of Vigor fizzles and Sean moves to his turn. During Sean's upkeep, Night becomes Day and Moon Rage Brute transforms back into Brutal Cathar. It triggers and exiles Dockside Extortionist. Also during his upkeep, Sean lets his Remora die. He draws, takes no actions, and passes the turn. During Noah's upkeep, Day becomes Night and Brutal Cathar transforms into Moon Rage Brute. Noah draws, sees the writing on the wall, and passes the turn. Mike draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He casts Blade Historian. He moves to combat and attacks Sean with Magus, Winota, Combat Celebrant, and Imperial Recruiter, and attacks Noah with Phyrexian Walker, Moonrage Brute, Dranith, and Prelate. When Mike attacks with Combat Celebrant, he exerts it, untapping his other creatures and gaining an extra combat step. Winota triggers twice, and knowing they are inevitably dead, Noah and Sean concede, and Mike wins the game. And Sean gets to start us off. Sean draws and plays a Wooded Foothills. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Savannah onto the battlefield. He casts an Elvish Mystic and passes the turn. Noah draws and plays a Scalding Tarn. He passes. Greg draws and plays a Misty Rainforest. He casts out Mana Crypt. He cracks his Misty Rainforest, pays a life, and fetches up a Bayou onto the battlefield. He casts a Bloom Tender and gives the turn to Mike. Mike draws and plays a Wooded Foothills. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Plateau onto the battlefield. He casts a Jeweled Lotus. He cracks his Lotus to help cast his commander, Winota, Joiner of Forces. Mike ends his turn. Sean draws and plays a Breeding Pool into play untapped, paying two life. He casts a Sylvan Library. He passes. At the end of Sean's turn, Noah cracks his Scalding Tarn, pays a life, and fetches up a Steam Vents into play tapped. Noah draws and plays a Command Tower. He casts Desperate Ritual, adding three red. He casts his commander, Quark the Thumbless. Noah casts Overmaster. Quark triggers, Noah wins the flip, copying Overmaster. Both resolve, and Noah draws two cards. Finished up, Noah passes. During his upkeep, Greg loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays an Underground River. He taps his Underground River to help cast his commander, Thrasios, Triton Hero. Greg passes. Mike draws and plays a Command Tower. He moves to combat and attacks Greg with Winota. Greg takes it and in his second main phase, Mike casts Dranith Magistrate. Mike ends his turn. During his draw step, Sean draws two extra from Sylvan Library, paying eight life to keep them both. He plays a Forbidden Orchard for turn. He casts a Spellseeker. It enters, and Sean fetches up a March of Swirling Mists into his hand. The table suddenly worries, and Sean passes the turn. Noah draws and casts Gamble. Quark triggers, Noah loses the flip, bouncing Gamble back to his hand. He plays an Island for turn. He pays two life to cast Jutaxian Probe, targeting Sean. Quark triggers, Noah wins the flip, copying Probe, targeting Greg. He looks at Greg and Sean's hand, and then draws two cards. Next, Noah casts Strike It Rich. Quark triggers, Noah loses the flip, bouncing it back to his hand. All finished up, Noah passes. At the end of Noah's turn, Greg activates Thrasios, scrying one, and revealing a waterlog grove into play tapped. During his upkeep, Greg loses his mana crypt roll and takes three damage. Also in his upkeep, he casts Vampiric Tutor. In response, Noah casts Submerge for its alternate cost, targeting Bloom Tender. Quark triggers, Noah wins the flip, copying Submerge, targeting Thrasios. It resolves, and Greg moves Thrasios to the command zone. Then the original resolves, and Greg puts Bloom Tender onto the top of his library. Then Vampiric Tutor resolves, and Greg says goodbye to Bloom Tender as he fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. Greg draws and casts a Mana Ball. He taps his Waterlog Grove and his Underground River to help cast Consecrated Sphinx. In response, Sean, not wanting to let that nonsense on the board, casts Mindbreak Trap for its alternate cost, exiling Consecrated Sphinx. Dismayed, his spicy creature didn't land, Greg passes to Mike. Mike draws and plays a Bloodstained Mire. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Sacred Foundry onto the battlefield untapped, paying two life. He moves to combat and attacks Sean with Dranith and Winota. Sean takes it, and in his second main phase, Mike casts Sanctum Prelate. It enters, and Mike names one. Everyone else sighs, and Mike ends his turn. During his draw step, Sean draws two extra through Sylvan Library, paying eight life to keep them both. He casts Kinnon, Bonder Prodigy. He taps Forbidden Orchard, giving Noah a spirit to cast Dockside Extortionist. It enters, and Sean creates two treasures. He pays two life to help cast Phyrexian Metamorph. It enters as a copy of Dockside. It triggers, and Sean creates two more treasures. He casts a Meal the Blast. Everyone suddenly stands to attention, and Sean passes to Noah. Noah draws, stares at Sanctum Prelate, and passes the turn. 
During his upkeep, Greg loses his mana crypt roll and takes 3 damage. During his draw step, he takes the damage from his mana vault. Greg casts Toxic Deluge, paying 4 life. In response, Sean casts March of Swirling Mists, where X equals 3, exiling a blue card, phasing out his own Emil, Kennen, and Dockside. Then Deluge resolves, and all creatures get minus 4, minus 4, wiping the board. All finished up, Greg passes. Mike draws, takes no actions, and passes. At the end of Mike's turn, Noah casts Brainstorm. He draws 3 and puts 2 back on top. Before Sean's turn, his creatures phase in. During his draw step, he draws 2 extra from Sylvan Library, paying 4 life to keep 1 extra. He plays an Emergence Zone. He activates Emil, targeting his Dockside. In response, Noah casts Stifle, targeting the activated ability of Emil. In response, Sean taps his Forbidden Orchard, giving Noah a Spirit, and casts Red Elemental Blast, targeting Stifle. In response, hoping to find an answer, Greg sacrifices his Waterlogged Grove, drawing a card. He does not find it, and the stack resolves. Red Blast counters Stifle, and Emil flickers Dockside. Dockside enters, and Sean creates two treasures. Since Kennen is on the battlefield, all of Sean's treasures add two mana, so he presents a loop of activating Emil, flickering Dockside, and generating more and more mana. He recasts his commander, Thrasios. He activates Thrasios, drawing his deck and putting all lands onto the battlefield tapped. He casts all of the creatures in his deck. He casts Finale of Devastation, where X equals 69,420, pumping his creatures and giving them haste. He moves to combat, attacks with the team, and Sean wins the game. Chad thought of the most offensive nursery rhyme and gets to start us off. Chad draws a card for turn and plays an underground sea. He casts a turn one, Mystic Remora. Chad passes. Greg draws a card for turn and plays a Mana Confluence. He casts a Mox Diamond, discarding a Taiga. Mystic Remora triggers and Chad draws. Greg taps his Mana Confluence to help cast his commander, Thrasios, Triton Hero. He passes. Ashani draws and plays a Command Tower. He casts Elvish Mystic. He gives the turn to Noah. Noah draws and plays a Command Tower. He casts Rite of Flame. Remora triggers and Chad draws. Noah adds two red and then casts his commander, Crock the Thumbless. He ends his turn. During his upkeep, Chad pays for his Mystic Remora. He draws and plays a Verdant Catacombs. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Watery Grave onto the battlefield untapped, paying two life. He casts Dark Ritual, adding three black. He casts Wishclaw Talisman. He activates Wishclaw, fetching up a card into his hand and giving Wishclaw to Ashani. Chad passes the turn. Greg draws and plays a Flooded Strand. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He casts a Soul Ring. Remora triggers and Chad draws. Greg taps his Mana Confluence to help cast Krenko Mob Boss. The table laughs at Greg's spicy test card, and he ships the turn to Ashani. Ashani draws and plays a Mana Confluence. He activates Wishclaw, fetching a card into his hand and giving Wishclaw to Greg. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts Dockside Extortionist. It enters, and he creates four treasures. He casts Ad Nauseam. Mystic Remora triggers, and Chad draws. In response, Chad casts Mind Break Trap for its alternate cost, targeting Ad Nauseam. Adnaz is exiled, and Ashani taps his Mana Confluence to help cast Skirt Prospector. He passes. Noah draws and plays a Mana Confluence. He casts Strike It Rich. Krark and Remora trigger. Chad draws, and then Noah wins his flip, copying the spells. He creates two treasures. He ships the turn. During his upkeep, Chad lets his Remora die. He draws and plays an Underground River. He taps his Underground River to help cast Doomsday. In response, Noah taps his Mana Confluence to help cast Brainstorm. Krark triggers, and he wins the flip. Noah draws three, and then puts two back on top. Twice. Unfortunately, he doesn't find what he needs, and Doomsday resolves. Chad fetches up five cards from his library, exiles the rest, and puts them on top in the order he chooses, and then loses half of his life rounded up. The table gets very worried as Chad passes to Greg. Greg draws and activates his Wishclaw Talisman. He fetches up a card into his hand and then passes it to Ashani. He taps his Mana Confluence to cast a Dockside Extortionist of his own. It enters, and he creates four treasures. He cracks some of his treasures to help cast Seedborn Muse. He activates Krinko, creating two 1-1 one -one goblins. Seeing where this is going, the table becomes increasingly worried. Greg casts Springleaf Drum and then gives the turn to Ashani. Greg untaps with Ashani through Seedborn Muse. During his upkeep, Ashani loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. Still in his upkeep, Ashani casts Vampiric Tutor. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and then loses two life. He draws and plays a Verdant Catacombs. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Badlands onto the battlefield. He taps his Mana Confluence to help cast his commander, Corval, Fey Cursed King. In response, Greg activates his Thrasios, scrying one and revealing a Mystical Tutor into his hand. Corvold enters, triggers, and Ashani sacrifices Wishclaw Talisman. Corvold triggers, Ashani draws, and Corvold gets a plus one plus one counter. He sacrifices his Dockside through Skirk Prospector. Corvold triggers, Ashani draws, and Corvold gets a counter. Unfortunately, Ashani is not able to get the draws he needs and passes the turn. At the end of Ashani's turn, Greg activates Krinko, creating eight goblins. Still on the end step, Greg casts Mystical Tutor. He fetches up a Mind Break Trap onto the top of his library. The turn moves to Noah. Greg untaps with Noah through Seedborn Muse. 
Noah draws and plays an arid mesa. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a volcanic island onto the battlefield. He taps his mana confluence to help cast his other commander, Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. It enters as a copy of Krark. He moves to combat and attacks Chad with Krark. Chad takes it, and in his second main phase, Noah casts Light Up the Stage for its spectacle cost. Krark and Sakashima trigger. He wins a flip and loses a flip, copying the spell and then bouncing the original back to his hand. He exiles Harmonic Prodigy and Phantasmal Image from the top of his library. Unfortunately, Noah did not hit what he needed and passes the turn. At the end of Noah's turn, Greg activates Thrasios, scrying one and revealing Mindbreak Trap into his hand. Also at the end of turn, he activates Krenko, creating 16 goblins. The turn moves to Chad. Chad draws and casts Ideas Unbound. In response, Greg casts Mistcast, targeting Ideas Unbound. In response, Chad taps his Underground River to help cast Swan Song, targeting Mistcast. In response, Greg activates Thrasios, scrying one and revealing a counterspell into his hand. Still in response to Swan Song, Greg casts Deflecting Swat for its alternate cost, targeting Swan Song. Swat resolves, changing the target of Swan Song to Deflecting Swat itself. Then Swan Song fizzles and Ideas Unbound is countered. Next, Chad plays a Cavern of Souls, naming Merfolk as it enters. He passes. At the end of Chad's turn, Greg activates Krenko, creating 32 goblins. An unbelievably worried table now watches as the turn moves to Greg. Greg draws and immediately moves to combat. With all the goblins in the world, Greg swings Seaborn Muse at Noah and 30 goblins at Ashani. Ashani blocks two goblins with Korvold and Skirk Prospector. Before damage, Greg activates Krenko, creating 64 goblins. Also before damage, Ashani sacrifices Skirk Prospector to itself and adds a red. Korvold triggers, Ashani draws, and Korvold gets a counter. Then Ashani and Noah take the rest. Greg activates Thrasios, scrying one and revealing a wooded foothills onto the battlefield tapped. Greg gives the turn to Ashani. During his upkeep, Ashani loses his mana crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and immediately moves to combat, attacking Greg with Korvold. Korvold triggers and Ashani sacrifices mana confluence. Ashani draws and Korvold gets a counter. Greg takes it and in his second main phase, Ashani casts Calling the Weak, sacrificing Elvish Mystic. Korvold triggers, Ashani draws and Korvold gets a counter. He adds four black. He casts Underworld Breach. In response, Greg casts Mindbreak Trap for its alternate cost, targeting Underworld Breach. In response, Ashani casts Tainted Pact. It resolves, and Ashani exiles until he puts Necromancy into his hand. Still in response to Mindbreak Trap, Ashani flashes in Necromancy. In response, Greg cracks his wooded foothills, pays a life, and fetches up a tropical island onto the battlefield. Then, Greg activates Thrasios, scrying one, and revealing a Dispel into his hand. With Necromancy still on the stack, Greg casts Counterspell, targeting Necromancy. Necromancy is countered, Mindbreak Trap resolves, and Underworld Breach is exiled. Ashani plays a City of Brass. He sees the writing on the wall and passes the turn. At the end of Ashani's turn, Greg activates Krinko, creating, like, a lot more goblins. The turn moves to Noah. Noah draws and casts Harmonic Prodigy. In response, Greg activates Thrasios, scrying one and revealing a Force of Negation into his hand. Noah plays a Training Center for turn. He moves to combat and attacks Chad with Krark and Sakashima. Chad takes it, and in his second main phase, Noah casts Light Up the Stage for its spectacle cost. Krark and Sakashima both trigger twice through Harmonic Prodigy. He loses every flip. Yes, all four of them. He casts it again. Krark and Sakashima each trigger twice. He wins three flips and loses one. He exiles Mental Misstep, Springleaf Drum, Jessica's Will, Force of Will, In the Festivities, and a Lightning Bolt. Unfortunately, completely out of mana, Noah passes the turn. At the end of Noah's turn, Greg makes a large number of goblins and quite frankly, we've kind of lost track at this point. The so turn moves to Chad. Chad draws and casts a Lotus Petal. He casts Mnemonic Betrayal. In response, Greg hard casts Force of Negation. Mnemonic Betrayal is exiled, and seeing no more outs, Chad passes the turn. At the end of Chad's turn, Greg makes probably about, I don't know, like 500 goblins or something. The turn moves to Greg. Greg draws and immediately moves to combat. He swings enough goblins to kill his opponents, and Greg wins the game. Ashani wins the Bomberman Challenge and gets to start us off. Ashani draws a card for turn and plays an Urza Saga, getting its first counter. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Felwar Stone. He passes. Nick draws a card for turn and plays a Morphic Pool. He casts a Mem Knight. He casts a Changeling Outcast. Nick passes. Mike draws and plays a Steam Vents into play Untapped, paying two life. He casts a Soul Ring. He casts a Lotus Petal. He casts a Mox Opal. Finished up, Mike ends his turn. Noah draws and plays a Shivan Reef. He casts a Jeweled Lotus. He cracks his Lotus to help cast his commander, Krok the Thumbless. He taps his Shivan Reef to help cast Gamble. Krok triggers, he wins the flip, copying Gamble. He fetches up a card into his hand and then randomly discards a Mind's Desire. He then fetches up another card into his hand and then randomly discards a Tavern Scoundrel. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Soul Ring. All through, Noah gives the turn to Ashani. During his upkeep, Ashani loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws, and in his first main phase, Urza Saga gets another counter. He plays a Sea of Clouds for turn. He casts his commander, Shorkai, Genesis Engine. In response, Mike casts Cabal Ritual, adding three black. 
He casts Ad Nauseam. Ad Nause resolves and Mike reveals a crop rotation, Fluster Storm, Windfall, Marsh Flats, Spell Pierce, Necropotence, Chrome Mox, Arcane Signet, Bloodstained Mire, Fierce Guardianship, Breeding Pool, Volcanic Island, Felwar Stone, Birds of Paradise, Pyroblast, Dockside Extortionist, Final Fortune, Jeweled Lotus, Ledger Shredder, and a chain of vapor, deciding to stop there. Then Shorkai resolves. The table worries as a Shawnee passes the turn. Nick draws and plays the Sunken Ruins. The table asks him to hold up interaction for Mike and he moves to combat. Nick attacks Mike with Memnite and Changely Nowcast. Mike declares no blocks and in response, Nick ninjutsus in his commander, Yuriko the Tiger Shadow, bouncing Memnite to his hand. Then Mike takes it and Yuriko triggers twice. Nick reveals a Thieves Guild Enforcer into his hand with each opponent losing one and a Demonic Tutor into his hand with each opponent losing two. In his second main phase, Nick recasts Memnite. He gives the turn to Mike. Mike draws and casts Chrome Mox, imprinting Birds of Paradise. He plays a Volcanic Island for turn. He casts Dockside Extortionist. It enters and Mike creates seven treasures. He casts a Jeweled Lotus. He casts a Tender Wall. He casts a Mana Vault. He casts Necropotence. He casts Crop Rotation, sacrificing Volcanic Island as an additional cost. He fetches up an Emergent Zone onto the battlefield. He activates Necropotence six times, paying six life and exiling six cards. He casts Chain of Vapor, bouncing Dockside to his hand. He sacks a land, copies the chain, and bounces Necropotence back to his hand. Mike moves to his end step and puts the Necro cards into his hand. Still in his end step, he cracks his Emergence Zone, giving his spells flash until end of turn. He flashes in a Dockside Extortionist, creating seven treasures. He flashes in a Gamble. He fetches up a card into his hand and then randomly discards Necropotence. He flashes in Underworld Breach. He escapes Gamble from his graveyard. He fetches up a card into his hand and then randomly discards Windswept Heath. He casts Brain Freeze with all copies targeting himself. He escapes Brain Freeze from his graveyard with all copies targeting himself again. He does this until he mills Lion's Eye Diamond. He escapes Lion's Eye Diamond. He cracks it, discarding his hand, adding 3 blue. He escapes Brain Freeze and Lion's Eye Diamond over and over again until he mills his entire library. He escapes Thassa's Oracle. Oracle enters, triggers, and Mike wins the game. And Noah gets to start us off. Noah draws and plays a River Glide Pathway. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Chrome Mox and printing Desperate Ritual. He casts a Mana Ball. He casts his commander, Krark the Thumbless. He casts his other commander, Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. It enters as a copy of Krark. With both commanders already on the battlefield, Noah passes to Mike. Mike draws and plays a breeding pool into play untapped, paying two life. He casts Mox Diamond, discarding Wooded Foothills. He casts Sensei's Divining Top. Mike ends his turn. Nick draws and plays a Flooded Strand. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an underground sea onto the battlefield. He casts Phyrexian Walker and gives the turn to Ashani. Ashani draws and plays a City of Traitors. He casts Azorius Signet. He passes. At the end of Ashani's turn, Nick pays 4 life to help cast Dismember, killing Noah's Sakashima. During his upkeep, Noah wins his Mana Crypt roll. During his draw step, he takes a damage from his Mana Vault. In his main phase, he casts a Ruby Medallion. He moves to combat and attacks Mike with Krark. Mike takes it, and in his second main phase, Noah plays a Mountain. Noah gives the turn to Mike. At the end of Noah's turn, Mike activates his top, looking at and rearranging the top three. Mike draws and plays a Bayou. He casts Dark Ritual. In response, Ashani pays two life to cast Mental Misstep, countering Dark Rituals. Mike sits back surprised as he's never seen his Dark Ritual countered before. A deflated Mike passes to Nick. Nick draws and plays an Underground River. He moves to combat and attacks Mike with Phyrexian Walker. Mike declares no blocks and, in response, Nick taps his Underground River to Ninjutsu in his commander, Yuriko the Tiger Shadow, bouncing Phyrexian Walker back to his hand. Mike takes it and Yuriko triggers. Nick reveals a March of Swirling Mist into his hand, with each opponent losing one. In a second main phase, Nick recasts Phyrexian Walker. He passes to Ashani. Ashani draws and floats two colorless through City of Traitors. He plays a Polluted Delta, sacrificing City of Traitors. He cracks his Polluted Delta, pays a life, and fetches up a Tundra onto the battlefield. He casts his commander, Shorkai Genesis Engine. Ashani ends his turn. At the end of Ashani's turn, Noah casts Geist Wave, targeting Mana Ball. Krark triggers, he loses the flip, bouncing Geist Wave back to his hand. Still in his end step, Nick casts Deadly Rollick for its alternate cost, exiling Krark. Noah sighs and moves to his turn. During his upkeep, Noah loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. During his draw step, he takes a damage from his Mana Vault. He plays an Ancient Tomb for turn. He recasts his commander, Krark the Thumbless. He casts Harmonic Prodigy. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast Geist Wave, targeting Mana Vault. Krark triggers twice through Harmonic Prodigy. Noah wins the flip, copying Geist Wave, bouncing Mana Crypt back to his hand and drawing a card. He wins his flip again, copying Geist Wave, bouncing Chrome Mox back to his hand and drawing a card. Then the original resolves, bouncing Mana Ball, and Noah draws again. Noah recasts Mana Crypt. He recasts Chrome Mox and printing Evoke Calamity. He recasts Mana Ball. All finished up, Noah passes to Mike. At the end of Noah's turn, Mike spends his top. 
Mike draws and plays a flooded strand. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a volcanic island onto the battlefield. He activates his top, looking at and rearranging the top three. He activates top, drawing a card and putting top on top. He casts Gamble. He fetches up a card into his hand and then randomly discards Ad Nauseum, which feels extra bad. He casts Dockside Extortionist. It enters and Mike creates seven treasures. He casts his commander, Krom, Ludovic's Opus. He moves to combat and attacks Noah with Krom. Noah takes it and Mike gives the turn to Nick. Nick draws and plays a polluted delta. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a watery grave into play untapped, paying two life. He moves to combat and attacks Ashani with Yuriko and Phyrexian Walker. Ashani declares no blocks and, in response, Nick ninjutsus in Silver Fur Master, bouncing Phyrexian Walker back to his hand. Ashani takes it and Yuriko triggers twice. Nick reveals a Sunken Ruins into his hand and then reveals a Universal Automaton into his hand with each opponent losing one. In his second main phase, he recasts Phyrexian Walker. Nick ships the turn to Ashani. Ashani draws and plays an island. He casts Imposter Mech. It enters as a copy of Dockside Extortionist, creating eight treasures. He casts Counterbalance. Chrome triggers and Mike draws. In response, Mike casts Fierce Guardianship for its alternate cost. In response, Ashani activates Shorkai, drawing two, discarding one, and creating a pilot. Then Fierce counters Counterbalance. Next, Ashani casts a Soul Ring. He follows it up with a Tezzeret the Seeker. He activates Tezzeret's second ability, fetching up an unwinding clock onto the battlefield. With his engine, see what it did there? Now set up, Ashani passes. Ashani untaps his artifacts with Noah. During his upkeep, Noah wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and casts Solve the Equation. Kirk triggers twice through Harmonic Prodigy. Noah loses his first flip, bouncing Solve the Equation back to his hand. He wins his second flip, copying Solve the Equation. He fetches up a Strike It Rich into his hand. He casts Strike It Rich. Kirk triggers twice and Krom triggers. Mike draws, then Noah wins his flip, copying Strike It Rich, creating a treasure. He loses his second flip, bouncing Strike It Rich back to his hand. He casts Solve the Equation. Kirk triggers twice. Noah wins his flip, copying Solve the Equation. With the copy on the stack, Nick casts March of Swirling Mist, exiling a blue card, phasing out both Harmonic Prodigy and Krark. Then Solve the Equation resolves, and Noah fetches up a Flusterstorm into his hand. He then wins his next flip, copying Solve, fetching up a Mystical Tutor into his hand. Then the original copy resolves, and he fetches up Mog Salvage into his hand. Noah plays an Island for turn. He casts Talisman of Creativity. Noah passes the turn. At the end of Noah's turn, Ashani activates Shorkai, drawing two, discarding one, and creating a pilot. Still in the end step, Noah casts Mog Salvage for its alternate cost, targeting Unwinding Clock. In response, Ashani casts Chain of Vapor, bouncing Unwinding Clock back to his hand. The turn moves to Mike. Mike draws and plays a Windswept Teeth. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Taiga onto the battlefield. He casts his commander, Ikra Shidiki, the Usurper. He moves to combat and attacks Ashani with Krom and Noah with Dockside. Both take it and Mike gains six life. All through, Mike passes. Nick draws and plays a Cephalid Colosseum. He moves to combat and attacks Noah with Yuriko and Silver Fur Master. Noah takes it and Yuriko triggers twice. Nick reveals a Memnite into his hand and then reveals a Thassus Oracle into his hand with each opponent losing two. In his second main phase, Nick casts Moth Dust Changeling. Nick ends his turn. Ashani draws and recasts Unwinding Clock. He activates Shorakai. In response, Noah casts Mystical Tutor, fetching up a Jessica's Will onto the top of his library. Then Shorakai's ability resolves and Ashani draws two, discards one, and creates a pilot. He crews Imposter Mech and moves to combat. He attacks Noah with Imposter Mech. Noah takes it, and Ashani passes the turn. Before he untaps, Noah's creatures phase in. Ashani untaps his artifacts with Noah. During his upkeep, Noah loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. Still in his upkeep, Ashani casts Pongify, targeting Krark. Krark is destroyed, and Noah creates a 3-3-8. During his draw step, Noah takes a damage from his Mana Vault. Finally in his main phase, he taps his Ancient Tomb to help recast its commander, Krark the Thumbless. In response, Ashani flashes in a Dress Down. Krom triggers and Mike draws. Dress Down resolves and Ashani draws, then Krark resolves. Noah casts Jessica's Will, adding 5 red and exiling Overmaster, Dualcaster Mage, and Swansong. He casts Overmaster from Exile. It resolves and Noah draws. He casts Dualcaster Mage. He passes. At the end of Noah's turn, Ashani activates Shorkai, drawing 2, discarding 1, and creating a pilot. Then Dress Down is sacrificed. Ashani untaps his artifacts with Mike through Unwinding Clock. Mike draws and moves to combat. He attacks Ashani with Krom. Ashani takes it, and in his second main phase, Mike casts Imperial Seal. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. Mike passes. At the end of Mike's turn, Ashani activates Shorakai, drawing two, discarding one, and creating a pilot. Nick draws and plays a Sunken Ruins. He moves to combat, attacking Mike with Yuriko, Silver Fur, and Moth Dust Changeling. Mike takes it, and Yuriko triggers three times. Nick reveals a fourth bridge Prowler into his hand, with each opponent losing one. He reveals a Dispel into his hand, with each opponent losing one, and he reveals a Verdant Catacombs into his hand. Finished up, Nick ends his turn. At the end of Nick's turn, Ashani activates Shorakai, drawing two, discarding one, and creating a pilot. 
Then Nick discards the hand size and the turn moves to Ashani. Ashani draws and plays an island. He activates Shorkai, drawing two, discarding one, and creating a pilot. He casts Draneth Magistrate. Ashani passes. During his upkeep, Noah loses his mana crypt roll and takes three damage. During his draw step, he takes a damage from his mana vault. In his main phase, he casts Dockside Extortionist. It enters, and Noah creates nine treasures. With nothing else, Noah passes. At the end of Noah's turn, Ashani activates Shorkai, drawing two, discarding one, and creating a pilot. Mike draws and moves to combat. He attacks Ashani with Krom and Nick with Ikra. They both take it, and Mike gains 11 life. Mike passes the turn. At the end of Mike's turn, Ashani activates Shorkai, drawing two, discarding one, and creating a pilot. Nick draws and casts a Soul Ring. He casts Mem Knight. Krom triggers and Mike draws. He casts Universal Automaton. He activates Mop Dust Changeling, tapping Mem Knight, giving it flying until end of turn. He moves to combat and attacks Mike with Yuriko, Silver Fur, Phyrexian Walker, and Noah with Moth Dust Changeling. Before damage, Noah casts Pyroblast, targeting Moth Dust. Quark triggers twice through Harmonic Prodigy. He wins his first flip, copying Pyroblast, targeting Yuriko. Yuriko is destroyed. Noah wins his second flip, targeting his own Dockside. It resolves, but doesn't destroy Dockside because it's not blue. Then, in response to the original Pyroblast, Nick Ninjitsu's in his commander, Yuriko, bouncing Moth Dust to his hand. Then they both take it, Noah dies, and Yuriko triggers twice. Nick reveals a Lotus Petal into his hand, and then reveals a Morphic Pool into his hand. In his second main phase, he plays a Morphic Pool for turn. He casts a Lotus Petal. Finished up, Nick passes. At the end of Nick's turn, Ashani activates Shorkai, drawing two, discarding one, and creating a pilot. Still in the end step, Ashani channels Ottawara, Soaring City, bouncing Imposter Mech to his hand. The turn moves to Ashani. Ashani draws and casts Imposter Mech. In response, Mike casts an offer you can't refuse. In response, Ashani casts Dispel. Krom triggers and Mike draws. In response, Nick casts his own Dispel, targeting Ashani's Dispel. With nothing else, Dispel counters Dispel and Offer counters Imposter Mech, and then Ashani creates two treasures. Next, Ashani casts Silence. In response, Mike casts Spell Pierce, countering Silence. Next, Ashani casts Isochron Scepter. In response, Mike casts Veil of Summer, looking for an answer. Veil resolves and Mike draws. Mike tells him that he did not find what he needs and he needs Nick's help. So in response, Nick cracks his Cephalid Coliseum, targeting Mike. Mike draws three and discards three. Unfortunately, he still cannot find an answer, and Isochron Scepter resolves. It enters, and Ashani imprints Dramatic Reversal. He activates Isochron, repeatedly casting Dramatic Reversal and untapping his non-land permanents. He generates infinite mana and then begins activating Shorkai, drawing and discarding. He draws until he finds and casts Blind Obedience. He now uses Isochron Scepter to cast Dramatic Reversal over and over again, this time extorting it through Blind Obedience. He does this over and over and drains the table, and Ashani wins the game. Mark wins the Flavor Town Challenge and gets to start us off. Mark draws a card for turn and plays a forest. He casts Birch Lore Rangers. He passes. Ashani draws a card for turn and plays a Yava Maya Coast. He casts a Soul Ring. He ends this turn. Bailey draws and plays a Volcanic Island. He casts a Mox Amber. Bailey ships it to Mike. Mike draws and plays a Windswept Teeth. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a savanna onto the battlefield. He casts Carpet of Flowers. He casts a Mana Crypt. He moves to a second main phase and adds one green through his carpet. He casts a Finehorn Elves and passes the turn. Mark draws and plays a Nykthos, Shrine to Nyx as his land for turn. He casts a Fauna Shaman. He activates Birch Lore Rangers, tapping two Elves, adding a green. He casts Copperhorn Scout. Mark passes to Ashani. Ashani draws and plays a Forest. He casts Fertile Ground on his Yavamaya Coast. He casts his Commander, Halden, Avid Arcanist. Ashani ends his turn. Bailey draws and plays a Mountain. He casts his Commander, Quark the Thumbless. Bailey passes the turn. During his upkeep, Mike loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and in his first main phase, he has one green through his carpet. He plays Shatter Skull, the Hammer Pass, into play untapped, paying three life. He casts his Commander, Rocco, Cabaretti Caterer, where X equals three. It enters and Mike fetches up a Dockside Extortionist onto the battlefield. Dockside enters and Mike creates three treasures. All through, Mike passes. Mark draws and starts off his turn by casting Summoner's Pack. He fetches up an Allosaurus Shepherd into his hand. He plays a Forest for turn. He casts Allosaurus Shepherd. He activates Fauna Shaman, discarding Wirewood Symbiote, and fetches up a Quirion Ranger into his hand. He activates Birch Lore, adding a green. He casts Quirion Ranger. He moves to combat and attacks Mike with Copperhorn Scout. Copperhorn triggers and Mark untaps his creatures. Then Mike blocks with Dockside and Copperhorn dies. In his second main phase, Mark activates Birch Lore twice, tapping four elves, adding two green. He activates Nykthos, adding four more green. He casts his commander, Azuri, Renegade Leader. He activates Quirion Ranger, bouncing a forest to his hand, untapping his Fauna Shaman. Mark ends his turn. Ashani draws and plays a mountain. He casts his other commander, Paco, Arcane Retriever. He moves to combat and attacks Bailey with Paco. Paco triggers and Ashani exiles an island, Bailey exiles a Rite of Flame, Mike exiles a food chain, and Mark exiles Natural Order. Then Paco gets four plus one plus one counters. 
Then Bailey takes 7, and in his second main phase, Ashani casts Rite of Flame from Exile through Halden, adding 2 red. He casts Simic Signet. Ashani ends his turn. Bailey draws and plays a Fiery Islet. He casts a Mana Ball. He casts his other commander, Sakishima of a Thousand Faces. It enters as a copy of Krark. Bailey ships the turn to Mike. During his upkeep, Mike loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws, and in his first main phase, he has 1 green through his carpet. He casts Teamer Saber 2. This is game over for the table because there are just barely enough artifacts and enchantments to go infinite with Dockside. So in response, Mark channels Beseju, who endures, targeting Ashani's Soul Ring. Soul Ring is destroyed, and Ashani fetches up an island onto the battlefield. Then Teamer Saber Tooth resolves. Mike activates Teamer Saber Tooth, bouncing Dockside to his hand. He recasts Dockside. It enters, and Mike creates four treasures. He casts an Avacyn's Pilgrim, and regretfully, passes to Mark. During his upkeep, Mark activates Nykthos, Shrine to Nyx, adding six green to pay for Summoner's Pack. He draws and plays a forest. He activates Birchlore, adding a green. He activates Quirion Ranger, bouncing a forest to untap Birchlore. He activates Birchlore, adding another green. He casts Finale of Devastation, where X equals 1. He returns Wirewood Symbiote from his graveyard to the battlefield. He activates Wirewood Symbiote, bouncing Allosaurus Shepherd, untapping his Fauna Shaman. Finished up, Mark passes. Ashani draws and moves to combat. He attacks Mark with Paco. Paco triggers, and Ashani exiles Salvage, Bailey exiles Solve the Equation, Mike exiles Path to Exile, and Mark exiles Skull Clamp. Then Paco gets 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters. Then Mark takes 11, and in his second main phase, Ashani plays a Crystal Vein. He casts Archmage Emeritus. He casts Beast Within, targeting Sakashima. Archmage triggers, and Ashani draws. Sakashima is destroyed, and Bailey creates a 3 3 Beast. With nothing else, Ashani passes. During his draw step, Bailey takes a damage from his Mana Ball. He plays a Scalding Tarn for turn. Bailey passes. At the end of Bailey's turn, Ashani casts Path to Exile from Exile through Halden, targeting Mike's Teamer Sabertooth. Archmage Emeritus triggers, and Ashani draws. In response, Mike activates Teamer Sabertooth, bouncing Rocco back to his hand. Then Sabertooth is exiled, and Mike fetches up a forest onto the battlefield tap. The turn moves to Mike. During his upkeep, Mike wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws, and in his first main phase, he has one green through his carpet. He plays the Taiga for turn. He casts his commander, Rocco, where X equals 4. In response, Mark activates Quarian Ranger, bouncing a forest, untapping his Birch Lore Rangers. He activates Birch Lore, adding a green. He activates Wirewood Symbiote, bouncing Birch Lore, untapping his Fauna Shaman. He activates Fauna Shaman, discarding Birch Lore Rangers, and fetching up an Elvish Spirit Guide into his hand. With Rocco still on the stack, Bailey cracks his Scalding Tarn, pays a life, and fetches up an island onto the battlefield. He then sacrifices his Fiery Islet to draw a card, hoping to find an answer. He does not find anything, and with everyone else out of answers, Rocco resolves. Rocco enters, and Mike fetches up an Emil the Blessed onto the battlefield. He pays 3 to activate a meal, flickering his Dockside Extortionist. Extortionist enters, and Mike creates 4 treasures. Mike presents a loop, a flickering Dockside with a meal, netting infinite treasures. He activates a meal, targeting Rocco. Rocco exiles, but Mike chooses to put it back into the command zone instead of exile. Mike can now repeatedly cast Rocco, fetching up every creature from his library onto the battlefield. Mike casts Rocco again. He fetches up Goto Bandit Warlord onto the battlefield. Goto enters, and Mike fetches up Helm of the Host onto the battlefield. He equips Helm of the Host to Goto. Mike moves to combat, triggering Goto, creating a copy, and getting infinite combats. He attacks the table over and over, until they are dead, and Mike wins the game. Bailey had the best facial tattoo at the table, and gets to start us off. Bailey draws a card for turn and plays a Volcanic Island. He casts a Lotus Petal. He casts a Lion's Eye Diamond. Bailey passes. Ben draws and plays a Command Tower. He casts a Misha's Bauble. He casts an Urza's Bauble. He cracks his Misha's Bauble, looking at the top card of Bailey's library. He cracks his Urza's Bauble, looking at a random card in Drake's hand. Ben passes the turn. During Mark's upkeep, Ben draws two cards through his baubles. Mark draws and plays a forest. He casts a Land of War Elves and passes the turn. Drake draws and starts off his turn by casting Land Grant for its alternate cost, revealing his hand, showing that he has no lands. In response, Bailey casts Swan Song. This could not have been more brutal for Drake as Swan Song counters Land Grant and Drake creates a 2 2 bird. Now dead in the water, Drake passes the turn. Bailey draws and plays an island. He casts his commander, Clark the Thumbless. Bailey ends his turn. Ben draws and plays a Mana Confluence. He casts Dragon's Rage Channeler. He ships the turn to Mark. Mark draws and plays a Deserted Temple. He casts Selvala, Heart of the Wilds. Mark passes. Drake draws, misses his land drop, and passes, discarding Past and Flames to hand size. Bailey draws and casts a Mana Ball. He casts his other commander, Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. It enters as a copy of Kark. Bailey gives the turn to Ben. Ben draws and plays an Underground Sea. He taps his Mana Confluence to cast Wheel of Fortune. Everyone discards their hands and draws seven. Ben moves to combat, and since Channeler now has Delirium, he attacks Drake. Drake takes three, and Ben passes to Mark. Mark draws and casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Wood Elves. It enters, and Mark fetches up a forest onto the battlefield. He casts Realm Walker, naming Elves as it enters. He casts a Jiraga Tree Speaker from the top of his library through Realm Walker. Mark ends his turn. Drake draws and plays a City of Brass. He casts a Lion's Eye Diamond. 
He taps the city of brass to cast Preordain. He scries two and draws a card. He casts a jeweled lotus. He cracks his lotus to help cast his commander, Asika, god of the tree. Drake ships the turn to Bailey. During his draw step, Bailey takes a damage from his mana vault. He plays a training center for turn. He casts a chrome mox and printing phantasmal image. He casts consider. Clark and Sakashima trigger. Bailey holds priority and casts Flusterstorm, targeting his own consider. Clark, Sakashima, and the storm copies all go onto the stack. Bailey continues to hold priority and cast Tybalt's Trickery, targeting one of the Flusterstorm copies. Clark and Sakashima trigger again. He loses his first flip, bouncing Trickery to his hand. He wins his second flip, copying it, targeting the Flusterstorm copy. Trickery resolves, countering the Flusterstorm copy. Bailey mills one, then he exiles until he reveals a snap, casting it for free, targeting Asika. Clark and Sakashima trigger again. He loses his first flip, bouncing Snap. He loses his second flip as well. Then the first Flusterstorm copy resolves, countering Consider. Then Bailey wins his first flip, copying Flusterstorm, targeting the original because there are no other valid targets. Then Flusterstorm counters Flusterstorm. Then he loses his second flip, but there is nothing to return. Then the original Clark and Sakashima triggers of Consider resolve. He wins his first flip, copying Consider. He surveils one, leaving it on top. He loses his second flip, but there's nothing to bounce. Now that the stack is clear, Bailey casts Mox Diamond, discarding a mountain. He recasts Snap, targeting Asika. Clark and Sakashima trigger. He loses his first flip, bouncing Snap. He loses his second flip as well. Unfortunately out of mana, and the flip's not being on his side tonight, Bailey passes to Ben. Ben draws and plays a City of Brass. He moves to combat and attacks Bailey with Chandler. Bailey takes it, and Ben passes the turn. During his upkeep, Mark loses his mana crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and starts off his turn by leveling up Jiraga Tree Speaker. He casts Beast Whisperer. He casts Heart Warden. Beast Whisperer triggers and Mark draws. He casts Copperhorn Scout, drawing from Whisperer again. He moves to combat and attacks Ben with Wood Elves. Ben takes it and finished up, Mark passes. Drake draws and plays a Scalding Tarn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He casts Lavinia, Azorius Renegade. Drake passes. During his draw step, Bailey takes a damage from his Mana Ball. He plays a Mountain for turn. He casts Snap, targeting Selvala. Clark and Sakashima trigger. He wins his first flip, copying Snap, targeting Lavinia. He holds priority and floats mana. He then bounces Lavinia and untaps two lands. He wins a second flip, copying Snap, targeting Beast Whisper. He holds priority and casts Tybalt's Trickery, targeting his Snap copy. Clark and Sakashima trigger. He wins his first flip, copying Trickery, targeting the Snap copy again. It resolves, countering the Snap copy. Bailey then mills one and then exiles until he hits Storm Kiln Artist. He casts Storm Kiln Artist. He then wins his second flip, targeting the original Tybalt's Trickery, copying it. Storm Kiln Artist triggers and Bailey creates a treasure. Then Trickery counters Trickery, Bailey mills one, and then he exiles until he reveals a Tavern Scoundrel. He casts Tavern Scoundrel. Then Bailey floats mana, and then the original snap resolves, bouncing Selvala, and Bailey untaps two lands. Next, Bailey casts Heat Shimmer, targeting Beast Whisperer. Kark, Sakashima, and Stormkiln all trigger. Bailey creates a treasure through Stormkiln, and with the triggers on the stack, Ben casts Swan Song, targeting the original Heat Shimmer. Heat Shimmer is countered, and Bailey creates a 2-2 bird. Then the Kark triggers resolve, he loses his first flip, but has nothing to bounce since it's been countered. He wins his second flip, copying Heat Shimmer, targeting his own Storm Kiln Artist. Storm Kiln and Tavern Scoundrel all trigger, and Bailey creates three treasures. Bailey moves to combat and attacks Ben with a copy of Storm Kiln Artist. Ben takes eight, and Bailey passes the turn, sacrificing the Storm Kiln copy. At the end of Bailey's turn, Ben casts Vampiric Tutor. Chandler triggers, and Ben surveils Arcane Signet into his graveyard. He then fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. The turn moves to Ben. Ben draws and plays the Steam Bents into play untapped, paying two life. He taps his mana confluence to cast an overloaded dam. Chandler triggers and Ben surveils a tundra into his graveyard. Then dam resolves, destroying all creatures. With the board clear of all these pesky shenanigans, Ben gets the turn to Mark. During his upkeep, Mark loses his mana crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and casts a circle of Dream's Druid. Mark passes. Drake draws and casts Abundant Harvest. He names land and then reveals until he finds a Marsh Flats, putting it into his hand. He plays Marsh Flats for turn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a savannah onto the battlefield. He taps the City of Brass to recast Lavinia, Azorius Renegade. Drake ends his turn. During his draw step, Bailey takes a damage from his Mana Vault. He recasts his commander, Clark the Thumbless. Bailey passes. At the end of Bailey's turn, Ben taps his City of Brass to cast Mystical Tutor. He fetches up an Intuition onto the top of his library. Ben draws and starts off his turn by casting Jessica's Will, adding 7 red. He taps his Mana Confluence to cast Intuition, targeting Mark. Ben fetches up an Underworld Breach, Savine's Reclamation, and a Lion's Eye Diamond. Mark gives him Lion's Eye Diamond. Ben taps the City of Brass to flashback Savine's Reclamation from his graveyard, targeting his Underworld Breach. Breach enters, Savine's copies, and then Ben returns Dragon's Rage Channeler to the battlefield. Ben casts Lion's Eye Diamond. This is when Drake reminds him of the Lavinia on the battlefield. This is also when Ben realized he has made a huge mistake. Channeler and Lavinia both trigger. 
LED is countered, and then Ben surveils Talisman of Dominance into his graveyard. Ben decides the only way to make this work is to force Surveil through Dragon's Rage Channeler. Ben escapes LED. Channeler and Lavinia trigger, LED is countered, and he surveils Ledger Shredder into his graveyard. He escapes LED. Chandler and Lavinia trigger again, LED is countered, and he surveils Tundra into his graveyard. He escapes LED again. Chandler and Lavinia trigger, LED is countered, and he surveils Plateau into his graveyard. He escapes LED. Chandler and Lavinia trigger, LED is countered, and he surveils Mana Crypt into his graveyard. Unfortunately, out of enough cards to escape, Ben sinks his head and passes the turn, sacrificing Underworld Breach. During his upkeep, Mark wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Nykthos, Shrine to Nyx. He casts Leaf Crown Visionary. He exiles Elvish Spirit Guide from his hand, adding a green. He casts Llanowar Visionary. Leaf Crown Visionary triggers, and Mark pays, drawing a card. Then Llanowar Visionary enters, and Mark draws. He activates Nykthos, adding 6 green. He casts Multani's Acolyte. Leaf Crown triggers, and he pays to draw. Then Acolyte enters, and he draws again. Mark activates Deserted Temple, untapping Nykthos. He activates Nykthos, adding a green. He casts Eternal Witness. Witness enters, and he returns Summoner's Pact to his hand. He casts Summoner's Pact. This is when Drake reminds him of the Lavinia on the battlefield. Also realizing what he just did, Mark tries to come up with a plan. Lavinia triggers and in response, Mark convokes Court of Calling where X equals 1. He fetches up an Allosaur Shepherd onto the battlefield. Then Lavinia's trigger resolves, but doesn't counter Pact due to Allosaur Shepherd. Then Pact resolves and Mark fetches up a Quarian Ranger into his hand. He casts Quarian Ranger. Leaf Crown triggers and he pays to draw. He activates Quarian Ranger, bouncing a forest, untapping Circle of Dreams Druid. He activates Circle of Dreams Druid, adding 7 green. He casts Fierce Empath. Leaf Crown triggers, and he pays to draw. Empath enters, and he fetches up a Regal Force into his hand. He casts Elvish Arch Druid, paying to draw through Leaf Crown. He casts Sylvan Scrying. He fetches up a Gaius Cradle into his hand. With his entire board now rebuilt, Mark passes the turn. Drake draws and starts off his turn by casting Tainted Pact. He holds priority and sacrifices his Lion's Eye Diamond, adding 3 blue. He then exiles until he finds Underworld Breach, putting it into his hand. He casts Underworld Breach. He escapes LED. He cracks it for 3 black. He escapes Thassa's Oracle. It enters, and with the trigger on the stack, he escapes Tainted Pack, exiling his entire library. Oracle's trigger resolves, and Drake wins the game. And Peter gets to start us off. But Ryan and Noah have pregame actions. Ryan puts Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling Pyroblast. Noah also puts the Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling a mountain. Peter draws and plays a Swamp. He casts a Jeweled Lotus. He casts a Mox Diamond, discarding Emergence Zone. He pays 6 life and cracks his Lotus to help cast his commander, Kirik, son of Yawgmoth. He pays 4 life through Kirik to cast Dothy Voidwalker. Kirik triggers and gets a counter. Peter ends his turn. Ryan draws and plays a Snow-Covered Mountain. He casts a Grim Monolith. He casts a Mox Opal. Ryan passes. Noah draws and plays a Shivan Reef. He casts his commander, Krark the Thumbless. He casts a Jeweled Lotus. He passes. Nick draws and plays a Mana Confluence. He taps it to help cast Birds of Paradise. Nick shifts the turn. Peter draws and plays a Beseju, who shelters all, into play tapped. He moves to combat and attacks Ryan with Dothy and Kirik. Ryan takes it, and Peter gains 3 life. Peter ends his turn. Ryan draws and casts a Mana Vault. He casts Thrill of Possibility, discarding Fork and drawing 2 cards. Fork and Thrill of Possibility are exiled under Dothy Voidwalker, and Ryan passes the turn. Noah draws and plays an Island. He cracks his Lotus to help cast his other commander, Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. It enters as a copy of Krark. He moves to combat and attacks Peter with Krark. Peter takes it, and Noah passes to Nick. Nick draws and casts an Esper Sentinel. He taps his Mana Confluence to cast Crop Rotation, sacrificing Mana Confluence as an additional cost. He fetches up a Gaius Cradle onto the battlefield. He casts a Bloom Tender. Nick passes. At the end of Nick's turn, Peter casts Cut Down, targeting Krark. Krark dies, and the turn moves to Peter. Peter draws and taps his Beseju to cast Soul Ring. He moves to combat and attacks Ryan with Kirik. Ryan takes it, and Peter gains 4 life. Peter ends his turn. Ryan draws, plays a Buried Ruin, and passes. At the end of Ryan's turn, Noah cycles Step Through, fetching up a Spellseeker into his hand. Noah draws and casts Spellseeker. It enters and he fetches up a Snap into his hand. He attacks Peter with Sakashima. Peter takes it and Noah passes. Nick draws and plays a Savannah. He casts Utopia Sprawl, naming Red as it enters. He casts his commander, Jetmir, Nexus of Revels. He moves to combat and attacks Peter with Esper Sentinel and Bloom Tender. Peter takes it and Nick ships the turn to Peter. Peter draws and casts Balthor the Defiled. Kirk triggers and gets a plus one plus one counter. He ends his turn. Ryan draws and plays a snow-covered mountain. He casts his commander, Godo, Bandit Warlord. It enters, and Ryan fetches up a Helm of the Host onto the battlefield. He activates Helm, targeting Godo. In response, Nick flashes in a Cathar Commando. He then sacks Cathar Commando, destroying Helm of the Host. Then Helm of the Host goes into exile through Dothy Voidwalker with a Void Counter on it. 
Ryan, with very little way out of this mess, passes to Noah. Noah draws and casts Snap, targeting Jetmere. Quark triggers, Noah wins the flip, copying Snap, targeting Spellseeker. In response, Peter activates Dothy Voidwalker, sacrificing it, casting Ryan's Fork for free, targeting Snap. Fork resolves, creating a copy of Snap, targeting Noah's Quark. Peter taps his Beseju, floating mana, then Snap resolves, Quark bounces, and Peter untaps two lands. Then Noah taps his Shivan Reef, floating mana, Spellseeker bounces, and Noah untaps two lands. Then Noah floats mana, then the original Snap resolves, bounces Jetmere, and then Noah untaps two lands again. He casts Stormkill and Artist. He taps his Shivan Reef to cast Gamble. Stormkill triggers, and Noah creates a treasure. He fetches up a card into his hand, and then randomly discards a Spellseeker. He casts Brainstorm, and creates a treasure through Stormkill. He draws three, and then puts two back on top. He casts Ponder, and creates a treasure again. He looks at the top three, doesn't like what he sees, shuffles, and draws. He plays a Fiery Islet for turn. Finished up, Noah passes. Nick draws and plays a Champion of Lamholt. He casts a Vren Wingmare. Champion of Lamholt triggers and gets a plus one plus one counter. Nick passes. Peter draws, takes no actions, and passes. During his draw step, Ryan takes the damage from his Mana Ball. He plays a Snow-Covered Mountain for turn. He casts a Lotus Petal, paying the Esper tax. He moves to combat and attacks Peter with Goto. Goto triggers, Ryan untaps it, and gains an extra combat. Peter blocks Goto with Kirik, Goto dies, and Peter gains five life. Finished up, Ryan ends his turn. Noah draws and taps his Fiery Islet to help recast his commander, Kark the Thumbless. Noah passes. Nick draws and also recasts his commander, Jetmere, Nexus of Revels. Champion triggers and gets a counter. He casts Faeburrow Elder and Champion gets a counter again. He casts a Mana Crypt. He moves to combat and attacks Peter with Vren Wingmare and Noah with Esper Sentinel, Bloom Tender, and Champion of Lamholt. Champion prevents anyone from blocking, so they both take the hit. All through, Nick gives the turn to Peter. Peter draws and casts Shieldra the Apocalypse. He passes. At the end of Peter's turn, Ryan pays to untap his Grim Monolith. During his draw step, Ryan takes a damage from his Mana Vault. Shieldred triggers and Ryan loses two life. In his main phase, he plays a Sandstone Needle into play tapped. He recasts his commander, Goto, Bandit Warlord. It enters and he fetches up a Hammer of Nizan onto the battlefield. Hammer triggers and Ryan attaches it to Goto. Ryan passes. During his draw step, Noah loses two life to Shieldred. In his main phase, Noah casts Underworld Breach. As for triggers and Nick draws. Shieldred triggers and Nick loses two life. Noah escapes Gamble. Kark and Storm Kiln trigger. Noah creates a treasure, and with the Kark trigger still on the stack, Peter pays six life through Kirik to activate Balthor, exiling it and returning all black and red creatures from the graveyard to the battlefield, which is his Dothy Voidwalker. Then Noah wins his flip, copies Gamble, and creates a treasure through Storm Kiln. Then Noah fetches up a card into his hand and then randomly discards Tybalt's trickery into exile through Dothy. Then the original resolves, and he fetches up a card into his hand and randomly discards Swan Song into exile. Noah pays two life to cast a Taxian Probe, targeting Peter. He creates a treasure through Stormkiln, then loses his Quark Flip, returning Jataxian Probe to his hand. He pays two life to cast Jataxian Probe again. He creates a treasure, then loses his Flip again, returning it to his hand. He pays two life to cast it again. He creates a treasure, then loses again, bouncing it back to his hand. He pays two life again to cast it again. He creates a treasure and, you guessed it, loses again, bouncing it back to his hand. Not one to back down from a challenge, he pays two life to cast it yet again. Stormkill triggers and creates a treasure, then Noah finally wins his flip, copying it, targeting Ryan. Stormkill triggers and creates a treasure. He looks at Ryan's hand and draws a card. Shielder triggers and Noah loses two life. He then looks at Peter's hand and draws a card, with Jataxian Probe getting exiled under Dothy. Shielder triggers and Noah loses two life again. Noah plays a mountain and, unfortunately stopped in his attempt, passes, sacrificing Underworld Breach. During his upkeep, Nick wins his Mana Crypt roll. During his draw step, he loses two life through Shieldred. He plays a Temple Garden into play untapped, paying two life. He casts Basri Ket. He activates Basri's second ability. Nick moves to combat and attacks Noah with Champion of Lamholt, Jetmere, and Vryn Wingmare, and attacks Ryan with Birds of Paradise, Esper Sentinel, Bloom Tender, and Faeboro Elder. Basri triggers, creating seven 1-1 one -one soldiers, all attacking Peter. Champion of Lamholt triggers seven times, getting seven plus one plus one counter. Now no one can block due to the Champion of Lamholt, and since Jetmere gives all of Nick's creatures plus three plus oh, Vigilance, Trample, and Double Strike, they all take it, die to combat damage, and Nick wins the game.